So from this module onwards, we will build the cache calculator application from scratch by using HTML, CSS and JavaScript. So let me first show you the application that we are going to build in this module. So this is the final version of the application that we are going to build in this entire module. So it is actually a cache calculator application. So I am actually using the basic style for this particular cache calculator application. The reason for that because this application is having a very tricky logic inside the JavaScript. So that is the reason I have used a very simple style for this particular application. Once you learn how to build this application, then you can modify the CSS is totally up to you. So if I enter here a like number of nodes, if I enter F5, you can see instantly the value of this particular element, which is a span element is actually updated. And also these values are also updated, which actually show the total cache 10,000. And also the total cache in words will display the result in words form like 10,000. If I enter here a like 2, then you can see now the cache is actually updated like 11,000. If I enter here like 1000 coins, you can see we get the 12,000. If I decrease the amount of coins, like if I enter here 4, if I enter here, then you can see now the cache will become like 11,043 okay so if we total it by using the calculator so that we can cross check it that the data is actually perfectly calculated so if i enter here like if i remove this one just to actually reduce the calculations so if i enter here like 1000 and if i plus and then if i actually use 25 plus and if i plus 8 and if i plus here 10 so you can see now the result is similar just like this particular cash calculator okay so it means that our cash calculator is working fine now the idea behind building this entire application is to actually add the number of nodes so that we can calculate the final cash so it is actually based on the indian currency right now we have these 10 currencies in india like starting from 1 to 2000 rupees node maybe this 2000 rupees node will be like uh, shut down in the upcoming like year or maybe in just september 2023 depending upon the situation of the indian market but right now i have added this note and also built this entire cash calculator application and the next thing is this entire application has a very complex logic that i already told you so the logic is very tricky for that i have to explain a lot of things so it's better if you should have some good knowledge about javascript because i will be using some like the advanced features of the javascript i will be using to build this entire application so make sure you have some good knowledge about javascript also whenever i update the value means whenever i enter a value here inside this particular input type you can see instantly the value will be calculated and displayed inside the span element and also the final value is also updated here so we need to add this particular code also so we have to do a lot of stuff inside the javascript part for this cache calculator application okay so that's it for this video so from the next video onwards we are going to start with the html part for this cache calculator application now i have already created the file inside the visual studio code for the saving of the time which is index.html style.css and script.js file now for completing this project you need the final images like these currency images so i have provided the images inside this particular lecture as a resources for this lecture so you have to download that rar file so let me first show you the rar file so this will be the file that you need to download and once you extract this particular file which is a dot rar file which is a winrar file so you need a winrar archive software to actually extract this particular compressed rar file once you extract that particular rar file you will get this cache calculator images folder instead of that we have another images folder and instead of that we have the currency images of the india like we have total 10 items so you need to just simply copy these images and create a folder just like where this entire project is saved so it is actually saved inside here you can see right now so this is a directory in which i have actually saved this particular project inside this particular folder which is project 5 cache calculator application instead of that you can see the index.html script.js and style.css file Instead of that, I have already created a folder and instead of this particular folder, just simply copy these all images and then paste them here. Even you can just simply cut it if you want to just take it as a backup because I need to provide these images as a resource download for this particular lecture. So that is the reason I have actually keep these two folders as a backup purpose. 
okay once you're done with it then you need to come to the visual studio code and then you need to add the html element so the first thing is we need to actually wrap this entire thing inside the container okay so for the container we have to add the division element so coming back to the index.html all right so i have also launched the project inside my web browser if you see it here you can see now this is a cache calculator application that that is actually working on this particular address part which is actually using the go live server extension and this is the final version of the application that we want to build so the first thing is we need to use the container and inside of the container we need to provide the h1 element not h2 it is like h1 element which is for the heading like cache calculator all right and instead of that we need to provide the division so to that div and here we need to add the class row and instead of that we need to provide the img which is src and then we need to provide the image so it is actually save inside the images directory and the first image that we want is actually the 2000 rupees note which is like 2000 note and for the alt you can just simply add the alternative text i actually don't want to enter this alternative text so i'm just going to remove it if i control save it you can see now the image is actually displayed inside this particular row division and after that we need to add the input type so the input type is actually this particular one we need to add this input type so that we can accept the 2000 rupees note okay means the number of 2000 rupees note so here we need to add the input then the type we need to deal with the number so that is now have specified here a type number then we need to specify the id so it is going to be like et i can simply say that the input type so i actually do it with the id name like et 2000 so it is like the id that i want to give it to this particular input element and after that we need to apply the class so that we can use it to style it so here we need to add the cache input and then we need to provide the placeholder text so i'm going to simply click on view and here we need to click on the word wrap so here you can see everything is just only one viewport of the visual studio code so here we need to add the enter number of rupees 2000 nodes so you can see we get the input type and we have this placeholder text right now you actually didn't able to see the placeholder text because i have didn't specify the placeholder as an attribute so i'm going to cut this entire code because i randomly type it so here we need to add the placeholder and instead of that we need to paste the message if i control save it you can see right now we get it now this notes is actually not visible that is the reason the default width of this input type is actually like smaller as compared to the number of text but don't worry we are going to fix this inside the css part of the cache calculator application then for displaying the 2000 rupees note entry directly by calculating it product to the element which is like this particular span element so we need to here place the another element which is the span element so span and then we need to here provide the text so it is act like a like a label so i have actually added here a txt then 2000 which is for denoting the 2000 rupees node then we need to provide the class so that we can apply the CSS and after that here we need to provide this zero because the default value that we want to display is actually a zero Now you can see this particular element is also appeared After that you just need to copy this and you have to actually paste it multiple time Okay, so first I'm going to just tackling the two of them first then i will be pasting the two more of them then i need to make some changes here we need to first change it with the like uh, 50 so it's like 50 no not 50 it's like 500 note if i save it you can see now we get the 500 then we need to actually change here 500 notes then this is going to be 500 and this is also going to be 500 so now you will get the idea why i have actually used these prefixes so that i can easily update the value at the end of these variable names all right so that is the reason i use this txt 500 txt 2000 so i just need to update this value so it will become easy for me to actually update the values quickly 
Then the next currency, which is actually for the 200 rupees note. So here we need to add the 200 rupees note. So actually it is not popping up. So we need to remove the values, which is like 200 note. If I control save it, you can see now the image is replaced. Then we need to remove this one zero. Then one zero from there also. And then the one zero from here also. You can see now the placeholder text is also updated and after that we need to copy this and paste it into one more time here we need to update it with the 100 100 rupees node then change it with the one then one then one save it then you can see we get the 100 rupees note entry and also the placeholder text there all right next we need to add here like 50 so simply remove it 50 note then this is going to be like 50 and this is going to be like uh, 50 rupees note and this is going to be like 50 all right then i'm going to paste it into one more time so now we get the two of them over so here we need to update it like uh, 20 okay and it is going to like 80 20 and it is going to like txt 20 it is going to let us 20 notes you get the 50 20 then we need to add here 10 this is going to be like 10 rupees notes and this is going to be like txt 10 save it now this is not removed means the image is not changed so here we need to update it with the 10 note all right so we need to press enter and you can see now we get the 10 rupees note okay and after that i'm going to copy it into two more time then for the one more time, I'm going to paste it. And then here we need to add the five note, and just here we need to add eighty five. So press five, and this is going to be like five. Save it. You can see we get the five rupees note. Similarly, this is for the rupees two notes. Eighty two. This is going to be like two, and then we need to change the note, which is going to be like two note. And then after that we need to copy it one more time and paste it here we're going to like one note this is going to replace one it is going to like 81 and this is going to be like one so finally we have added all the currencies of the india by replacing the code we get our image we get our input type and the span element for the displaying of the result then the next thing that we need to place is actually a row for the reset button. So here after the end of this particular division, which is the one rupees note currency, make sure you are inside the container because everything is going to be present inside the container. All right. So make sure you are inside of the main container. Here we need to add the division element. And then we need to provide here a class, which is called row. And inside of that, we need to provide the button and here we need to provide the id which is like btn means the id then we need to provide the btn reset and then we need to provide the reset button all right and then we need to provide here a division element which is like class and instead of that we need to provide the row and then the result part which is like result part and after that we need to provide the span element okay and then instead of the span element we need to provide the id which is like txt final cache here we need to provide the total cache which is zero and then we need to duplicate it, this particular line of the code and then we need to update the id which is like txt final cache in words okay tasty final cache in words and this is going to be like here we need to by default display a zero control save it you can see total cache is zero means the total cache and then this is a zero which is for the total cache in words don't worry these are actually coming into the one line we are going to update it with the use of this css which is the next step of this particular cache calculator application so now it's time to start with the CSS part for the cache calculator application. So for that we need to use the style.css file 
and this file is already linked with the index.html. So come back to the style.css inside of this particular file first we need to select the body selector and instead of the body we need to provide some code. So the first line of the code that we want to provide is the margin. We need to specify the margin. So margin when it is going to be 0 and then we need to provide the padding. So padding is going to be 0 and then we need to provide the background. So this will be the property and instead of that we need to provide the linear gradient function which is going to be the having a value called to write to write comma and then we need to provide the here value which is e0 f f f and f all right and then we need to provide the another value which is a hash symbol and then this is going to be like f f c is 0 c b so this will be the secondary color code that will be you and you can see now the gradient color is applied after that we need to provide the font family font family it is going to like arial helvetica just removing the helvetica one and control save it you can see the default padding and margin and also the font is changed for this entire application because we have applied the code inside the body element then we need to apply the color the color is going to be like three times three which is for the black all right and after that we need to select the container container then we need to start the block of the container instead of that first we need to specify the max width property so max width it's going to like 600 pixel and then we need to provide the margin property so margin from like uh, top and bottom is going to like 100 pixel and from left and right it is going to like auto by control save it you can see now the margin is changed for the container okay and after that we need to provide the padding padding property that is from left and right means from top and bottom is just 20 pixel and from left and right it is going to be 5 pixel all right and then we need to apply the background color so it is for the linear gradient so we are going to use the linear gradient function again we need to at this point of time we are going to use it to left then we need to provide the color code which is 3466d1 and then we need to provide the another color code which is ff I can say 1493. If I control save it, now you can see the gradient color is applied to the container. Alright, and for the rounded corners, we need to use the border radius property. Border radius is going to like 8 pixel. And then we need to provide the box shadow. So box shadow is going to like 0, then we need to provide the 2 pixel. Then the blurness is going to like 4 pixel. And then we need to provide the RGBA function, right? Instead of that, it's 0, 0, 0, and 0 0.1. Control save it. Now you can see the box shadow and also the rounded corners applied to the container, right? Then we need to use here another property which is going to be like display. So, display we are going to use the flex. Then we need to provide the align items, it's going to be like the center. Alright, you can see everything is actually aligned in the single row. Then we need to provide the flex direction, which is column. Alright, and then you can simply see how the code is applied. And even I can just simply go and increase the blurness to your 10 pixel so it looks more crisp. Means the blurness applied to the back shadow. Alright and uh, next we need to create the animation which is actually a fade in animation so we need to create the keyframes for the fade in animation because we need to apply the animation so keyframe or uh, i can just simply go with the add the rate keyframes then to provide the identifier name which is going to be like fade in then zero percent And then after that, we need to provide the hundred percent. Then 
then it will use the opacity it's going to zero and then this is going to be transform property which is going to translate y and instead of that we need to provide the minus 20 pixel all right and then we need to provide the 100 percent like opacity and this is going to be one then transform and translate y zero control save it and instead of that we need to provide the animation then we need to use the animation fade it is just fade in and then the name of the animation we provide the fade in then one second and this is going to be like ease the control save it you can see now the fade in animation is applied to the container all right so that's marks the code completion for the container next we need to provide the code for the header so just simply you can come to the index.html so this is the heading so we need to provide the error class like header because i actually forgot in the html part so come back to the style.css right so instead of that we need to use the header then start the block of the code then first we need to apply the text align property text alignment is going to be like center and after that we need to provide the margin the margin bottom is going to be like 20 pixel and then we need to provide the color so color is going to be like white you can see now the code is applied to the heading all right and then we need to provide the code for the rows because you can see everything is actually wrapped inside in the rows because it is actually treated as a single row so we need to add the code for the row so that it will looks more beautiful okay so i will be using here a row because it is a and with the use of the dot because it is actually a class selector then we need to provide the margin top property so margin top is going to like 10 pixel control save it then you can see margin is applied to the row which is a division container then we need to set the display property because right now they are not perfectly aligned so we need to actually change its display property which is going to like display flex then justify content like a center and after that we need to add the align items property align items it is also going to be center and then we need to provide the transition then we need to apply the transform transition transform is like 0.2s and then we need to provide the ease control save it now you can see if i just simply okay so this is actually a row then on the hover we need to add the effect so it is like a row then we need to provide here the hover which is a pseudo class element instead of that we need to use the transform then the scale instead of the scale we need to provide 1.05 as a value now you can see if i hover then the scale is actually performed means the scale transformation also you can see these images then this input type and this particular span element are actually aligned at this vertical means horizontally it's aligned properly okay horizontally aligned properly now it's time to apply the code for the image in which the currencies are displaying so image we need to provide the margin right property because right now they are very close to each other means there is no margin so if i control save it you can see margin is applied now it's time to actually add the code for the input so we need to select the input element and then array brackets and then we can find the type type then the not nth type it is actually a type nth type type then we can use the number and then start the block of the code here first we need to apply the padding property so padding is going to be like 10 pixel and then we need to provide the font size is going to be like 15 pixel then width is going to be like 250 pixel control save it you can see the input type is actually modified a lot with the use of these codes then to add the border radius property border radius is going to be like 4 pixel 
border radius is going to be 4 pixel then the border we need to change is it like border 1 pixel solid and then after that as symbol 3 times c okay then we need to use the flex so flex is going to be like 1 okay the flex property that we have applied here 1 and after that we need to add the transition property which is like border color zero point three s and then we need to provide the ease okay and then here we need to add the background color this is the background color that is hashtag three times f All right and then we need to add here a color property means once we add the text here right now if we add the number so we want to add the color as well so color hashtag three times three all right background color color and then we need to add here a font weight property font weight is going to like 600 you can see now it will become more bold okay so the text will become more bold okay guys so this is for the input type element then we need to change the code for the input type on focus state so here we need to add the selector which is like focus state and then we need to start the block of the code so why i need to actually because we want to remove these arrows that is why i actually added this focus and then we also need to add some more code so the first thing is we need to use the border color so border color then the color is like ff7 e f5 this will be the border color and then we need to remove the outline so outline is going to be none okay and then we need to provide the box shadow property so box shadow 0 0 0 not 0 it's like 2 pixel and then we need to provide the color code which is has symbol f f7 e 5 f okay so you can see now the border color of the input type is changed if you can see it here there is a slight border color change because the color code is almost same at the left side which is pink but in the right side you can see the color code of the border is changing means the color of the border is changing then we need to remove these two things which is these arrows so for that we need to actually provide some code by using these some notations which is like webkit okay so this is like webkit and here we need to type the entire code which is inner inner spin button okay and then we need to provide the comma and also need to start the block of the code and then we need to actually use it as a duplicate the code which is webkit outer spin outer spin not a single double t we need a single t you can see the, now it now because we need to add the code here and also remove this comma to remove it we need to add here like a webkit okay webkit and it is for the appearance that is this one and to set the none if i do that you can see now this arrow is actually removed and then to provide the margin the margin is going to be zero all right you can see now the style of the input type is done now the next element that we want to style is actually this particular span elements okay this particular span element that we want to apply so you can see if i enter the text it's going to do the thing so let's add the code for the span element so for that we need to come back to the index.html so if i come back so this is the class that we want to use which is actually used to style this span element which is a cache text so come back to the style.css then we need to actually use a dot operator then the name of the selector because it is a class selector instead of that first we need to add the font weight property so i'm going to type the code quickly because the difficult part i have already done here and now it's time to use the margin left property because these all the properties are very self-explanatory okay because it is a self you can easily understand it with their name which is like with 50 pixel and the most 
40 pixel not 50 pixel then we need to use the display in line and here we want to add the block and after that we need to add the another property which is text color so it is like uh, text color not not text color it is like text align all right and then we need to add the color color and this is going to be like white okay now i have actually specified the inline block and this text align center and also the width so that whenever the value is will become two digit then it is not going to shift the input type and the image and also itself i have already explained this in many of the my previous courses and also in my many of the previous projects all right so if you watch that things then you will understand these three lines of the code here also how they are actually working then we need to add the style code for the button so we need to select the button here button then start its block of the code inside of the button we need to add the padding property so padding is going to like 10 pixel 20 pixel and then here we want to add the font size is going to like 16 pixel and then we need to add the background color background color has symbol ff7 e 5 f you can see now the color of the button is actually changed then we need to add the color as symbol f f f then we need to add the border so border is going to be like none then we need to add the border radius which is going to like 4 pixel and then to add the cursor so cursor is going to be like this is a cursor we need to add the value here pointer okay the color is applied you can see if i hover it then the cursor changes to points sir now you can see if i hover it if i control save it and now if i hover it then you can see the cursor is changes to pointer all right you can see here and also the animation is also applied to the button as well because the division element in which it is wrapped means the code is present inside the division element which is class is actually row all right so that is the reason things are applied to the button as well so here we need to use the transition property transition then you need to use the background background and then here we need to use the color 0.3s and it is going to like ease okay and then we need to add a align self property so align self is going to like flex and here we need to add the button button then this is going to like hover then we need to start the block of the code just like background color as symbol ff 6 c c 4 a you can see if i hover it then you can see color of the button will become little dark orange okay next we need to add the code for the final cache which is the total cache and the final cache in words so for that we need to use the id selectors because here you can see these are the id selectors that we are going to use so copy it come back to the style.css as symbol and then we need to paste the name of the text final cache again come back to the index.html copy this text final cache in words and has symbol and then we need to paste the name of the id and inside of that First, we need to change the font size. So, font size is going to like 18 pixel. And then we need to add the font weight. Font weight is going to like bold. Okay. And then we need to add the margin top property. So, there should be a margin between the button and the text cache, means the final text cache. So, margin top is applied 20 pixel. And then we need to change the color. By save it, you can see the total cache color is changed then we need to style this zero so come back to the txt final cache in words then here we need to provide the margin so margin top is going to like 10 pixel then we need to add the font style property font style is going to like italic and then the color so color is going to like has symbol ff so control save it you can see the text for the particular is also changed and if i come back to the index.html 
we need to actually use this result part so that we can apply some style this row one is actually used to get this particular hover animation means the hover scale effect that is this one but this result part will be used to actually separate these two from the single row means so that the zero will be display after the end of this particular text which is the total cache so for that here we need to use the dot operator then the name of the selector instead of that then we need to use the display is going to be like flex and then we use the flex direction which is column all right you can see now the style is applied to the text final cache in words and also the application looks similar with the final version of the application you can see there is a slight modifications in between these text that you can do it by yourself so from the next video onwards we are going to start with the javascript part which is the most interesting part for this particular application and also the second version we will be going to do it because the one video will take up to actually provide this particular functionality to calculate the total cache in numeric form then for converting the text in words which is the final cache in words this will take a second video because it's involved a lot of things that i need to explain so that is the reason this particular application will be divided into two different parts of the javascript all right so that's it for this video thank you for watching see you in the next video so now it's time to start with the javascript part for the project which is our cache calculator application so for that we need to use the script.js file now this file is already linked inside my index.html by using this particular line of the code so make sure you link your script file otherwise whatever you will write inside this script file it's not going to reflect back inside this particular html file so the first thing is we need to actually get the references of all of these particular html elements inside the variable so before doing that we need to listen to the document dot and we have to actually listen to the add event listener so we are going to listen to the dom content load listener means the dom content loaded because whenever we update the value of the input type we want to instantly listen to that particular event and then display the working of the logic inside this particular span element okay so that is why we are actually going to use dom content loaded event handler all right and after that we need to add the callback here so i'm going to use the arrow function and then providing the body of the function and after that whatever code we will write everything will be present inside this particular dom content loaded listener now instead of that we need to create the references of the variable so the reference of the variable is et20000 means the et20000 i'm going to name the variable name not et20000 it's going to et2000 then we need to add their document dot get element by id and instead of that we need to provide the id name which is already is like et2000 because the reason for doing this is actually so that i can easily add these id names inside the script file that is the reason i have specified this et2000 et500 and similarly once we are going to fetch the ids of this particular element means we are going to initialize the id to the variable inside the javascript so that is the reason we are going to use this particular approach which is like txt500 and txt200 so i'm going to just simply duplicate this line of code multiple times and then i'm going to update the values here which is like et500 then this is actually going to be et200 which is for the 200 rupees node then this is 100 then this one is 50 and it's going to like 20 then we have 10 then 5 then we have 2 and then we have 1 i'm going to remove the last one so total we have 10 currencies so it's like 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 so these are the currencies that we will be used for the creation of the cash calculator application now i'm going to copy this and pasting it here because the variable name and the id name is similar so i'm going to copy and paste it by just duplicating it means copy and pasting by using the double click of the mouse which will be like easy for me and very quickly so you can see now i have successfully able to initialize the ids to the variables similarly we need to get the reference of the other 
input elements means the other elements that is this particular span element so for that we need to here create the bunch of variables which is like txt 2000 which is actually used to display the result so document dot get element by id and inside of that we need to provide the id which is txt 2000 if you come back to the index.html you can see this particular span element has an id txt 2000 similarly i am going to duplicate this into multiple times and then i am going to update the value so it is like txt 500 then this is going to like txt 200 this is like 100 this one is 50 then we have this one is 20 then we have 10 rupees note then we have 5 then 2 and then in last we have 1 now i'm going to copy then the id is going to be similar simply you can just simply copy and paste it which i am doing here right now copy it and paste it copy it so we have did it copy it and here i'm going to paste it copy and paste it so let me copy this particular one here pasting it and copy and paste it you can see now i have initialized all the ids okay so we get the references of all these particular span elements and all of these particular input elements now the next step is we need to actually get the reference of these three elements also which is the button then the total cache and the total cache in words so again come back to here here we need to add the const and this is going to like txt final cache it's going to equal to document dot get element by id get element by id and instead of that we need to provide the cache which is like txt final cache then we need to provide the error the core which is for the txt final cache in words so here we need to change the name of the variable which is txt final cache in words and then we need to check the id name also so it is like txt final cache in words so i'm going to paste the id name also you can see this is the id name then at last we need to create the reserve variable for the btn which is like btn reset and just checking the id name which is btn reset so simply copy and paste the id name also here so now the variable initialization part is done it's time to create the actual logic so which is the cache calculator logic so here we need to create some bunch of arrays so the first array is actually for the cache inputs because we want to set the listeners to these particular ones actually the input listener so that is the reason we need to actually wrap this all inside the array and by using the loop we can traverse it because if we try to add the listener one by one then it will become a time consuming task so that is the reason what i am going to do i am actually going to here use the cache inputs array is equal to and then we need to initialize this particular array so the first is like 8200 means the 82000 then we need to add the 8500 right so this will be then 80 we need to add the 200 then 80 100 then again we need to use the 80 50 then 80 make sure to specify the comma 80 20 and comma 80 um, our 10 then 5 not 80 it's like 5 then we need to here specify the comma and again comma 82 and then 81 all right so make sure we have 10 elements like 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 so perfect we have 10 elements similarly for these span elements we also need to create the array so like here we need to use the const and this is actually for the cache text okay so this is going to be cache text which is the array name then we need to provide the bracket then txt 2000 then txt 500 then txt means we need to specify the comma txt 200 then comma txt 100 then comma txt 50 then txt 20 right and then txt 10 and comma txt like our 5 then txt 2 then txt one okay so this for the text values so it's like one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so we have ten values of the text views also means the 
span elements. Then we need to set the listener to these input elements. So for that we need to use the cache inputs dot. So here I will be using the for each. Instead of that, we need to provide the callbacks. So the first thing is we need to here provide the input, then specify the comma, then the index. And after that, we need to here provide the arrow function, which is a callback, right? Then to start the body. Right, and instead of that, we need to use the input, which is this particular input. Then we need to set the listener, which is add event listener. And here we need to actually listen to the input listener. And then specify the comma. And after that, we need to again pass here arrow function. So here again the arrow function. Make sure the arrow is also there. And then instead of that, we need to provide the calculate cache function, which is the cache calculate function. And instead of that, we need to pass the index value. All right? Means whatever we will get the index here we are actually passing it to this particular function so we need to create this particular function all right so for that we need to here use the function keyword then cache calculate function so this function is going to accept a parameter so make sure we need to specify the parameter to this function so it is like index all right so it is going to accept an index now first we need to create here an array which is for the denomination of the cache. Denominations of the cache. Here we need to add the variable. So we have total 10 cache currencies. This is the denomination. Right. So we need to add this denomination. Then we have 2. Then we have 1. So total we have 10 elements. So we have now perfectly 10 elements. And after that, we need to create a row value. So, you want to create the cons, then row value is equal to, and then we need to provide the cache inputs, which is the array name, which is this particular one, cache inputs. And here, instead of that, we need to use the index, which is this index, whatever index that we will, suppose if we enter a value here, like in this particular one, so this actually a second index, because the index is started from zero. So, this value, of the index will be added here like cache inputs 3 so actually we are going to denote this et200 because it is actually a third index which is actually a 2 because the index is started from 0 so this will be added here and inserted to this particular row value all right and after that we need to get the value because the content that is present in this particular text at this point of time i have added a 5 so that 5 value will be replaced by this particular code all right and after that, we need to multiply it with the denomination value. That is the values that we have created here. Now, which value we want to multiply. So again, we need to provide the index. That is this particular one. Index. According to the index, we want to multiply it with the denomination. So here, the value is actually like 5 into like the value of the cache, which is 200. So it is going to like 5 into 2, which is like 1000, because we are actually adding here uh, like 5 nodes, which is the number of nodes is 5 for the 200 rupees currency. So that is the reason it is going to display here a uh, 1000 as a result. All right. This logic will be working. If you dry run it by yourself, then you will get the complete idea. All right. So this is the function that is used to calculate the cache. But before calculating, we need to actually set this row value to the text content of this span element that is this particular one so for that reason we need to use here a cache text because the cache text has done all the array elements in which we want to display the result this is actually denoting the span elements of the array so cache text according to the value of the index we want to update the value so here we are actually dealing with the third index which is actually a value 2 because the index is started from 0 so we are actually dealing with this particular third value which is the third row so this value will be added here means this particular txt 200 will be selected all right and after that we need to update its text content so we need to use the text content function which is the text content means the text content property we want to update the text content property so we want to set it with the row value and then we are going to use the two fixed so that we doesn't get any float values which is 0. Now, if I control save it, 
and if I enter here a value, you can see now the result is instantly updated inside this particular span element. So now the logic is working perfectly fine. Now we need to actually display this particular result. Suppose if we inside this particular total cache. Also, if you enter the values in different elements, because this function will be coded whenever there is a change appeared inside the DOM content loaded. So if I enter here like this value, then you can see the values updated inside this particular row also. If I enter here value, then you can see it's also updated. If I enter here, then you can see if I enter here, if I enter values, if I enter here, now you can see everything is updated value. Now the aggregate value means this sum of all of these particular values should be instantly updated to this total cache element, which is the element in which we are going to display the total cache. So for that, we need to create the function. So it is actually a function. So we are going to create the function, which is total cache function. And then we need to here provide the values. So here we are going to use the let, which is the total cache function or you can say that the total cache value. Now why we are using here a let because this particular variable value will be updated multiple times and that value will be added to this particular total cache. So that is the reason we have used here a let. If we use the const then we can't actually reinitialize this particular variable. So that is the reason we have used here a let. And after that we need to use the cache text. Now we can easily reference this cache text array directly inside this particular function because it is actually in the global scope. So that is the reason because this is function is actually a part of this particular DOM module and everything is actually present inside this particular DOM module. So that is the reason we can take a reference directly to is inside of this particular function because this cache text acts as a global to this all of the content of the code means all of this function, right? So cache text, then we are actually here using the for each loop because we are going to set check each of them that is the reason we are going to use here a for each loop then here we need to provide the text inside of that which is the text then we need to provide the callback which is the arrow function right then to start its block of the code inside of the cache text we need to actually use the cache which is the total cache value variable which is this particular variable total cache then I am actually using here the short syntaxing property which is actually initializing the value and also adding it to the initialization then we need to use the parseInt function because the values that we will get from this particular span element it's actually in a form of text so that is the reason we need to use the parseInt function here so parseInt that is this one and after that we need to get the value which is text dot text content because we are actually getting the text value so that is the reason we need to parse it to the integer right so this will be the value will be added to this total cache value. Now we need to set this total cache value because we are actually traversing it every time and once we traverse it then we want to update this particular value to this total cache variable means this total cache element which is actually having a variable which is txt final cache. So we need to use this txt final cache here txt final cache dot and we need to update its text content which is this text content is equal to and here we need to craft the message which is total cache all right and then we need to add here a plus sign which is total cache value control save it and if i enter here value you can see now the value is actually not updated the reason for that we need to actually call this function also so to call this function after calculating the cache we need to call this particular function also here like total cache all right after calling this particular function now the code is refreshed if i enter here like two you can see instantly the value is also updated here but there is a one problem inside this one it's actually showing the 200 even if there is no values entered here so if i refresh it and if i enter here like two then you can see inside of this particular 100 row, it's actually going to display the 200. So there is a problem inside of this particular one. So we need to actually look at this particular problem here. So maybe there is a initialization problem. Like, and there is a problem you can see here. 
the id of this particular one is not changed here so we need to actually copy this and paste it here control save it now you can see the code is refreshed if i actually refresh one once more then here i'm going to enter 5 now you can see the values is perfectly updated if i enter here like 20 you can see now the total cache is 20000 if i enter here like 10 now you can see the total cache is 22000 if I enter here like 3, 4, 3 like values randomly I am entering here then you can see total cash is 22,610 rupees. Now we need to use the calculator so that we can check whether we are actually perfectly calculating the values or not. So the first value is 10,000 so I am going to actually reduce some of the calculation it is going to 2, it is going to 2 also and this is also going to be 2 and this is also going to be 2. So that we need to actually perform less calculation alright. So I'm going to clear everything. Then first value is 4000. So plus and then other value is like so actually it is not working. Why actually I have used the calculator multiple times. Plus then we need to add the 1000. Plus then we need to add 400. Then 300. And then we need to add 150. And then we need to add 80. And then we need to add 40. Then we need to add 25. And then we need to add here like uh, 10 plus 5, 15. So you can see it's actually displaying this 6010 and our value is also 6010. So our logic for calculating the total cash is also working. So the next step is we need to actually convert the entire total cash inside the words like convert to word which is the little more tricky part for this particular application because we have to write a lot of code and we need to set up a lot of things and I need to explain a lot of things also. So that will be covered in the next video. So that's it for this particular lecture. Thank you for watching. See you in the next lecture. So welcome back to this video. Now in this part of the cache calculator application, we are going to add the functionality for converting this cache into words. So I'm going to click on this particular refresh button and also I'm going to check the application because once we are going to start the code for the conversion of the numeric value to word then we don't want to fix the errors inside this particular total cache related thing so here if i enter here 2 then the value is updated 4000 which is correct if i enter here 5 then the value is updated 2500 which is correct if i enter here 5 then we get the 1000 if i enter here 5 we get the 500 as a result but there is a one problem if I enter here 5, then it's also going to display the value inside this particular 50 means this particular row, which is the 50 rupees note currency. So there is a problem, and the problem is here. You can see right now in front of your code, it is actually initialized with the 8000. So we need to actually provide here 8050, which is 8050 for the 50 rupees currency of the India. All right, now everything is actually matching perfectly. Now again, I'm going to enter here 2 then 2 then you can see here 3 then 2 now if I enter here 2 you, we get the perfect result now here 2 then 10 to the 20 then 10 then we get 2 20 40 then 2 then we get the 4 and then 2 which is 1 into 2 by then 2 so now the cash is perfectly calculated so now it's time to add the functionality to this particular reset button so that we can reset the data and after that we are going to set the code for the invalid inputs right now you can see if i enter here some invalid inputs like this minus value so we want to avoid these values also all right we want to restrict it with this input invalid values so the user can't enter these particular invalid values so first we are going to add these two features and then after that we are going to add the features to convert the cache into words all right so here we need to set the listener to the button all right so when you set the listener to the button which is our btn reset so here we going to add the add event listener and instead of that we need to listen to the click listener of the button and here we need to call the function which is clear data so this function is not created yet so we need to create this particular callback which is the function so here after that we need to here provide the function then the clear data and then we need to start its block of the code now instead of this particular clear data function we need to actually check for traverse each and every of the input type means we need to actually 
traverse each of the input type we need to check each of the input type and set its value to the empty string so to do that it's very simple we have to use here cache inputs dot for each and then inside of that we need to start its block of the code but we need to start the block inside the braces of the for each all right inside the braces of the for each so here we need to provide the input and after that we need to provide the arrow and then start its block of the code inside of the cache input which is the input dot value is equal to and when to set the empty string value and similarly we need to copy this into one one more time and here we need to replace it with the cache texts cache text and this is going to be like here text not text content and then we need to have provide here text also so now if i enter here values like three you can see here and if i click on the reset the values is actually going to be reset now here there is a problem the text content for this span element is not updated that is because it is actually a text content variable means this span element so here we need to use the text content because the value will be the property of the input type and the span element has a property text content if i control save it and if i enter here some values like here values values if i click on the reset then you can see everything is actually set it to zero then for handling the invalid values like this negative values we need to add here a check for this particular cache inputs so here we need to add the cache inputs dot for each because we need to set it for the every input element all right then here we need to provide the input and then the arrow function bracket means the arrow operator and then we need to start the block of the code instead of that we need to provide the input then we need to set it the listener so we want to check for the input values and specify the comma then i will be here specifying the arrow function and instead of that we need to provide the condition so first we need to check the create a variable which is const value is equal to then we need to use the parseint function so it is like parseint and instead of the parseint we need to provide the input dot value because whatever we are actually traversing the values we need to check for the values input dot value and then we have total 10 and after that we need to apply here a condition so if is an n and instead of that we need to provide the value also if there is a value which is smaller than zero so we need to also check for the condition also like smaller than zero then what do we want to actually do we want to set the input type to empty string so like input type which is the value then we need to set it to the empty string control save it if i try to enter here negative values then you can see once i enter here negative value so i am actually not able to enter here a negative values all right so we actually handle the invalid inputs as well now it's time to add the functionality for converting the text into words so for that we need to create here a function which is function keyword then we need to provide the name of the function which we convert to words like this particular one convert to words then the round bracket of the function then here instead of this convert to words we need to provide the number so the number is actually a value that we need to provide to this particular function so after once we are setting the final cache that is here we need to call this function here so we need to set the value to txt final cache in words so it is a text value means the text tag so we need to update its text content so here the total cache so we are actually need to craft the entire message means construct the entire message total cache in words all right so we need to here use the dollar symbol all right dollar and then starting the curly brackets so here i need to use the template string because the dollar concept will not going to be work here if we use the normal double quote so we need to use the convert to word function and instead of that we need to pass the value of the total cache variable if i select here view word wrap then everything will be presented in the same viewport of the visual studio code so what we have done here we have actually called the convert to word function and instead of that convert to word function we have passed the total cache value that is the value of this particular 
वेरिएबल वी हैव पास ए टोटल कैश वैल्यू टू दिस पर्टिकुलर कन्वर्ट टू वर्ड फंक्शन आफ्टर दैट वी नीड टू एड दी कोड इन साइड दिस पर्टिकुलर फंक्शन बिकॉज इट्स गोइंग टू एक्सेप्ट अ नंबर एज अ पैरामीटर बट बिफोर दैट वी नीड टू सेट हेयर लोड ऑफ थिंग्स so i'm going to copy and paste the array values because i have already created these values inside my notepad because it is like a repeated task so that is the reason i'm going to copy it here but before copying i need to actually create some references so that you can understand it so first we need to create here the units array like uh, if i initialize the bracket here then we need to create here another array which is like tens like uh, this particular array and then we need to create a third array which is like tens is equal to and we need to set here a value so now after providing the declaration of these arrays we need to initialize the values inside of these arrays so it is actually a little bit like a repeated task because we have to enter here a lot of values so i'm going to copy and paste these three values of the array so that to save a little bit of the time because it's a repeated task So what I am going to do, I am going to open my Notepad file and I am going to paste the code here. So this will be the array initialization code for this particular arrays. Okay. So now I am going to reduce the size of the window of the like browser, and you can see. And also I am going to zoom out a little bit so that you can see everything more clearly. All right. So this will be the code. Okay. So we have these three arrays right now. You can see. the initialization of these three arrays okay so we have these three arrays here so this array is tens array and this now the one more thing is this value is for the zero case because it is going to handle the zero and it is actually used for the unit values which is for the 0 to 9 so whenever there is a value come inside of this particular input type which is 0 to 9 so that array will be used which is the units array and similarly if it is a case for the values like uh, from 10 to 19 then the values word will be picked from this particular array which is the tens array and similarly if it is a case for the tens array which is like 30 20 40 then it will be handled means from 20 to 90 will be handled by this particular array all right means it is going to handle by this particular array so i hope you get the idea because in english language we have 26 alphabets and to get these alphabets in a working we can't use a direct approach so we need to actually convert the value that is provided with this particular total cash value we need to convert it into the words so to do that we need to actually create a mechanism here now the one more important thing that i want to explain is this particular two values now this will be required because the first value of the index 0 which actually denotes the value of this single units which is already covered by this particular units array so whenever there is a value required to replace this 0 to 9 suppose if there is a 2 0 6 so now it's actually a 6 is come here so it is like 206 the english notation of this particular will be like this means it will be converted to 206 so that 6 will be picked from here so the 100 will be added by using the conditions because the crore the lakhs and the 100 and the 1000 will be added by using the conditions but this will be the prefix words that will be used to convert the values of the numeric into words i hope you get some of the idea because this logic is tricky i already explained because i need to explain a lot of things so these are the three things that i have explained to you this first one is actually denotes the single units value the second one is actually denotes the tens value which will handle the values from 10 to 19 and this is going to itself handle the values from 20 to 90 now for handling the values like 200 1000 and lakh and crore so we need to add all of these four strings by using the conditions okay so that we are going to do next we need to add here a condition so if number because 
this particular function is going to accept a number as a parameter that is this one so if it is equals to equals to zero then we need to add here return zero okay so this will be used to actually return a zero in the initial stage of when this particular function is called so that's particular if condition is used for this particular purpose and after that we need to create here another variable which is let words words is equal to and then here we need to provide it with the empty string value now after that we need to add here some conditions for these particular arrays so for that here we need to first check if the current number like uh, this particular number we need to use this particular number and check for the condition if the number is actually greater than zero if it is greater than zero then we want to perform the if block otherwise we don't want to perform anything if the number is not greater than zero okay so this condition will be executed so here inside of this particular if block we need to check whether the number is actually smaller than 10 so if the number is smaller than 10 then we need to actually use this array to update this particular words variable value all right so here we are going to use the short syntax property to actually initialize and also add the variable value so it is going plus words and here instead of that we need to use the units array so units array and the number that we are getting here we need to pass it directly as an index value to the array so suppose we enter here like inside of this particular application if i enter here 5 you can see the total cache is 5 right now it's actually showing undefined because this function is return nothing because we are not returning anything from this particular function so if i can do it here like return and return words that is this one dot trim so i'm going to remove the spaces means the white spaces before and after the string error purpose just for removing the error okay if i just control save it and if i enter here like 5 you can see right now we are getting the value 5 that is because the current number is actually 5 and that is passed to this particular function which is the convert to word function because inside of when we are calling this particular function so here we are actually calling the function instead of this convert to word function we are passing the value total cache value this value is actually the value of this particular total cache so 5 will be passed to this function and it will come back to here inside of this comparison like 5 is not equal to 0 so this block will not be executed then the 5 is greater than 0 so now its condition is true then it's come to this particular if block then here 5 will be compared 5 is smaller than 10 which is true then it's going to initialize the words variable with their particular units number value so here it is looks like like uh, units and means the array inside of that it is actually a 5 index so it come back to the units array like the first one is equal 0 second is 1 2 3 4 and 5 then that particular word will be picked and it will be initialized to this particular variable which is the words variable because we have initialized it with the empty string but now it has a value 5 means this particular word variable which is a string representation of the 5 and that will be written by this particular function with this particular block of the code means this particular line of the code and we are using the trim function so that we can remove the white spaces before and after the word which is the string all right so this is the working for the conditions that is the digits from 0 to 9 now similarly we need to check for the condition for the tens and also for the tens so after that here we just need to remove these lines means remove the extra spacing then we need to add here the else if condition so else if instead of that we need to check whether the number is actually smaller than 20 because we need to handle the condition from 10 to 19 remember in the array i have explained that this will be the array used to take care of the values from 10 to 19 that is the comment i have added okay so that is what we want to do here and come back to the if condition then to start the else if block instead of that we need to first do what we need to use here some calculations because we cannot directly set the number to the index of the array because it is actually a two's value so we also need to take care of the values like if i enter here like 22 then you can see it's become 49 now at this point of time it is going to do nothing because this particular if block is empty so there is no such conditions available and the words variable is not updated so this is actually a 49 right and if i just simply remove it here like uh, if i enter here only like 5 so it is actually a 15 but right now the 
10 the value 15 is not picked up because we have not specified any condition here so first i'm going to write the code then i will be explaining you how this is actually working then here we need to add the words which is the variable then we need to add here the addition and then the initialization which is to add the values and initialize it to the words variable and then here we need to use the tens array because the values are actually taken care by this particular array instead of that first we need to minus the number minus 10. now why we are actually minusing with the 10 so that we get the index value and we can easily use that index inside of this particular array because the indexing of these particular arrays is actually started from zero so right now you can see here the value is actually 15. so if i use here the current number is actually 15. so if we use here 15 minus 10 then the value is actually equals to like 5. so the tens array has a value which is like 5. so if i just do it here like this way means the tens array has a value 5 the index is passed here 5 which actually denotes this particular values because this is actually stored at the index of 0 means the 0 1 2 3 4 and 5 so we will get the 15 value inside this particular words variable so if i control save it and if i try to do the same by using here just 5 which is for 10 and here also 5 then you can see now the value 15 is printed to the text in words division element which is the output element okay you can see now the value 15 is printed the reason for that i already explained you because the number is current is 15 which is minus 10 so that we can get the indexes so that is what we are done with the use of the tens array now it's time to use the tens array to update the values which is actually greater than 19 suppose if i enter here like 2 right now it is 25 so the value is actually greater than 19 remember the arrays here this particular array is will take in care of the values which is from 10 to 19 and now the rest of the values from 20 to 90 will be taken care by this particular array which is the tens array so we need to use this particular array so that will be used inside the else block so here we need to use the else block so it is like else block inside of that we need to add the logic so here we need to use the words then again the short syntaxing property and then we need to use the tens array instead of the tens array we need to perform some calculation so first we need to use the math math dot like this particular math dot lower function and instead of that we need to divide the current number with the 10 now why we are actually dividing the number so that we can remove the tens place from the number because we need to split this number into two different values like 20 which is 2 0 and then we need to take care of this particular 5 value separately what i mean here the number is actually 25 but we need to take care of this number means the number is splitted into like this way which is 20 and then we need to take care of the 5 as well like this 5 so that will become like 20 5 so in order to get it because if we use it like 25 so we need to split this number so that is the reason we need to divide here number with the value 10 okay so once we divide the number then we need to actually see the result once we divide the number then that will be added to the way so if there is a current number is like 25 so 25 divided by the 10 so once we divide the current number which is like 25 divided by 10 so it is like 10 to the 20 so we will get the two value that two is the index like this is the zeroth index this is the one index and this is actually a two index so it is like 20 so 20 will be initialized to this particular variable and that then 5 will be taken care by these particular conditions all right so if i control save it here and if i try to do it just like here if i enter here value like uh, here if i enter 5 which is 10 and then I, I enter here 5 yeah you can see here 30 but there is no 5 is actually done here for that we need to check the another condition inside this particular else block because right now this number is actually ignoring the condition because 35 is greater than 0 35 is smaller than 10 false 35 is smaller than 20 false then it's actually come back to this particular condition but we get the 35 but we need to take in care of this particular 5 value similarly if we take in the example of the 25 if i reset here here if i enter 5 and if i enter here 10 then you can see we get the 25 but the problem is that we are not able to see the result 5 so we need to add the conditions inside this else block because once we are inside the else block there is no way to actually get back to these particular conditions all right so in order to do that 
according to this particular project logic, we need to add air condition. So, we need to check for the current number. So, if the number is modulus operator, we need to use the air, a modulus operator. If it is divisible by 10 and greater than 0, then we want to perform the condition. So, if it is divisible by 10 and if it is greater than 0, then we want to perform the condition, which is in this case, it is not fully divisible by 10 because it's going to leave a remainder 5. So, 5 is greater than 0, then that particular if block will be executed. Then we need to update the value. And remember, we need to actually get here a space. So, for that, we need to add the empty string as well inside this particular words variable. And so, again, we are going to use the short syntaxing property to actually add the values and also initialize it. So, plus, then we need to here first initialize with the empty string, which is this one. Then we need to add the concatenation because plus is used for the concatenation. So, the 20 values already taken care by this particular line of the code. But this 5, we need to take care by using the units array. Because remember, the units will be taken care of all the values from 0 to 9. So, here we need to use the units array. And instead of that, we need to pass the value. So, again, we need to calculate this logic because the current number is actually 25. So, if we directly pass the number, then we will get the undefined value. So, we need to use this particular logic here also, which is number divisible by 10. So, it's going to return us a value which is 5. All right. Then we get the value 5 that will be initialized to this particular words variable. So, here we are getting the values like units 5. So, on the fifth index, we have a value like this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, we get the 5. Now, if I control save it and if I do the same here like 10 and if I enter here a value 5, then you can see here finally we get the value which is 25. So, I hope these if conditions are actually clear to you because these are necessary for handling the values from 0 to 9, 10 to 19 and from 20 to 19. But what if the values are actually far more greater than these? Like if I enter here like 5, you can see right now this is 50. If I enter here like 5, you can see it is now 100 and that will become undefined. So, for handling the 100 case, we need to use the conditions and we need to also use the concept of the recursion because we are going to call this function in again to solve the approach. Like we are actually removing here the tens place because we are splitting the number into two different digits. Similarly, for the 100, we need to split the digits into multiple ways. Means split the digits into three different ways. So, suppose if I enter here 1. So, we need to take care of the 100 and then we need to separately take care of this 40. Now, the logic for the 40, we have already written by this particular if condition and I have already explained to you as well. Now, I am going to write the logic for the 100th one so that we can remove the 100 place and then define the values inside this particular final text to cache in words variable. Okay, means the numeric to words variable conversion. So, for that we need to add the if conditions. So, here after that we need to here use the if condition. And instead of that we need to use the math because we are actually performing the calculation. So, we want to perform the division. So, currently we want to divide the number by the 100. So, if the number division is actually greater than 0, then we want to perform the condition. So, right now this 140 is actually greater than 0 because if we divide the 140 with the 100, what we will get? So, if I open my calculator because I want to show you, like if I just simply divide here 140 divided by 100, so we will get 1.4 and this is why we have and that's why we have used here a floor function. So, we will get a value which is 1. So, 1 is actually greater than 0. So, it means we are getting the 1. So, that means it is actually a 100. But we need to construct a logic so that we can append a hundred string to that particular one value so that it, we actually form our word representation of the string which is the 100. So, for that we need to here again update the words variable which is the value. This is the variable that we are actually updating. Again, we are going to use the short syntaxing property to actually initialize the value and also add it to the variable. So, words then we need to call here a recursion approach. So, we need to again call the convert to word function. Instead of that, Again, we need to pass the math.floor because we are again going to perform the calculation. So, math.floor and instead of that, again, we need to update the value which is the number divided by particular 100 value. Alright, and then we need to append it by using the 100 and then the string that we want to use here. So, this is a string and there is and also you should add here some space. Okay, so once we done that, then that particular one value that we are getting with this particular convert to word function, we are getting the value 1 like this. 
okay and then we are actually appending it like 100 okay so this will be the one value will be 100 then we need to format the number means this particular string will be added to this now we need to initialize that particular number as well so here we need to use the number and then we need to use the percent which is a modulus operator and then if it is equal to 100 okay so we are actually formatting the number so if i actually here control save it and try to run the project again for the 100 value so if i enter here a 1 then you can see we are getting the value 100 now if i enter here like 5 so this 110 now this 100 is actually dealt by this particular if condition and then this 10 value will be dealt by this particular condition which is like this 10 is smaller than 20 so this particular condition will be executed similarly for writing the other logics like if i copy and paste it here for the thousand one we just need to here increase a zero and also here increase a zero and also here we need to increase a zero then the rest of the logic will become very easy i'm going to remove this comment here then here we need to add the thousand thousand if i save it here and now if i enter a value inside the thousand like here if i enter two then you can see we are getting the value 1000 and if i enter here like two then we are getting the value 1400 which is actually correct similarly for adding the values for the lakhs like if i just simply here copy and paste it then we need to just simply here increase the zeros to five and here we need to also add two zeros and here we also need to add two zeros and this one is for the lakhs lakh can simply as here lakhs if i enter here lakhs value so suppose if i enter here 25 this is 25000 means the 50000 not 25000 50000 so if i enter here 60 nodes then you can see 1 lakh 20000 we are able to print the value correctly and similarly if we want to add a value which is in crores so simply you need to add here seven zeros so just increase the two zeros and also here you need to increase the two zeros and also here increase the two zeros right now there is a four three so if i control save it and here we need to use the crore crores and if i control save it now if i enter here a value like 500 you can see 10 lakh and if i enter you can see now we are getting the crore values so one crore twenty five thousand, which is the true value so you can see our application is working fine now the only problem that we are facing in this particular application is that when i click on the reset these values is are actually not getting reset now to solve that particular issue whenever we click on the reset button if i control save it and if i again here run the application and if i enter some values if i click on the reset then the, you can see the values of the input type and the span element is reset but we are not getting to actually this value will be reset which is the total cache and the total cache in words now in order to fix that First, we need to set the values to these span elements as zero. Right now, you can see it's actually set it to empty string. So, coming back to the clear data function where we are actually calling the clear data. So, here we are actually setting the listener to the button and then we are calling the clear data function. So, inside of that, first we need to set the zero. If I control save it here and if I enter some values like here and if I click on reset, now you can see the values are actually set to zero, but still the total cache is actually not reset. So after setting the reset means after changing the inputs type values and also the span elements we need to here call the function which is total cache so again we need to call this particular function if i control save it right now and if i now enter values here if i click on reset then you can see now we are finally able to reset the cache to zero so that's it for this particular module if you like this module then please leave a review because your review definitely going to help me to reach more students and also it motivates me to create more awesome courses like this thank you for watching and i will see in the next lecture thank you very much so welcome back to this particular module so from this module onwards we will build the random hex color tile generator application so let me first show you the application so this is the application that we are going to build in this entire module so you can see here we have these kinds of squares that has these colors code is actually appearing which is a hex color code so whenever i click on copy you can see the page says copied to clipboard which is actually the color a hex color code so it is actually copied so if i come back here and paste it you can see the color code is actually pasted because it is copied into the clipboard so when i click on ok you can see 
okay so this is the application that we will be built in this entire module and if i refresh the page then we will get different random color that is actually a hex color so total we are actually getting 50 you can increase it like whatever you want which i will tell you in the javascript part of the project so our first step is to start with the html part for this random color generator application now for the html part i have already created the file inside my visual studio code which is index.html style.css and script.js file and i have also launched this project inside my web browser you can see a random hex color generator or you can say that a random hex color tile generator application now inside of that first we need to actually place a one container then inside of that container everything will be presented so what I mean here, if I just show you the final version of the application, this is the heading for the random color generator. Then we have the main container and inside of that container, we have everything that is this particular one. This is actually a big container and inside of that container, we have the color container that has a span element and a button for the copy of the color code. So coming back to the index.html, so here first I'm going to place the h1 element which is the heading for the project that is you can see this is the heading for the random color generator and then we need to place here a tag that is for the container container and then inside of the container we need to place the other things that is actually a color container so i'm going to write here color container so inside of the color container we need to place this span element span tag and then i'm going to here write a random color name just for the css purpose because once we complete the code then we are going to actually delete this because we want to check whether how our css will look like once we add the code inside this style.css so that is the reason i have added this code because this entire code will be removed once we complete the css part and after that we need to place here a button and inside of the button we want to display the text that is copy so you can see all of these three elements is now presented inside the web browser so that's it for the html part for this particular project which is the random hex color tile generator application in the next part we are going to start with the css of this project now for the css part we have to use the style.css file now inside of the style.css file first i'm going to select the body element and inside of the body tag first we need to set the margin to zero then the padding to zero as well and after that we need to use the font family so the font family that i will be using here uh, like this particular one and if i control save it then you can see now the font of the project is actually changed then we need to select the h1 tag and inside of that first i'm going to select and the alignment of the tag which is the center and then we need to add the text decoration to underline you can see now the element is actually modified then we need to actually select the container and then we need to start its block of code and after that we need to first set it the display so it's like display flex not block it's like flex and after that we need to select the flex wrap to actually wrap and then we need to here set the justify content to actually center now if i control save it you can see this particular code will be modified and then we need to select the color container so color container and then just start its block of the code so make sure i have checked the color container so yeah it's actually container and instead of that first we need to select the background color so i'm going to here select the random background color because we are going to update these entire thing by using javascript at runtime so that is the reason this code is just for checking the css how it will look like then we need to select the width and height to like 200 pixel if you want to display in a rectangular shape then you can actually reduce the like uh, width and increase the height if you want to display in a rectangular form right now i want to display like in a form of square so I'm going to specify both width and height to the same dimension. Then to select the color for the font. So I'm going to use the white color for the font. And after that, instead of using aqua, I will be using a different dark color. Right. And then here we need to use the margin from all sides is going to like 5 pixel. 
If I control save it, then you can see margin is applied. Then we need to set the display to flex. And then we need to select the flex direction to column. And then we need to set the justify content to column as well. Means justify content to center node column. If I control save it right now you can see the things have actually changed then we need to set the align items to the center you can see everything is now placed at the center of the container and after that we need to increase the font size so font size is going to like 25 pixel then we need to set the text shadow so text shadow is going to like 2 pixel then here by like 2 pixel and then we need to set the 4 pixel and then the rgba function which is like 0 0 0 and the alpha is going to like 0 0.5 all right and then to set the border so we actually want a border so border is going to be like a solid border of like black of 2 pixel and then to set the border radius to 5 pixel not ps it's like pixel you can see we get the rounded corner okay and then we need to set the content means the css for the button so first we need to set the background color to the button which is like ff1493 you can see this is the color code for the button and then we need to set the code for the border so border is going to like none and then to set the border radius border radius is going to be like 3 pixel and then after that to set the padding so padding from like uh, top and bottom is going to lie 8 pixel and from left and right it is going to like 16 pixel. You can see now the padding is changed. Then we need to set the margin top. So margin top is going to lie 15 pixel. So there is, should be a difference between these two elements. And then we need to add a transition property. So transition is going to like background color. Background and then here we need to specify the color and then we need to add the transition to this particular background color which is going to be like 0.3s and after that we need to add the cursor so cursor is going to be like pointer if i add it then after that we need to add the button which is the hover colon then we need to add here hover and after that we need to add the background color which is like this particular one ff0055 if I hover over it, you can see now the color of the button change on the hover of the button. So that marks the completion of the code for the CSS part. In the next part, we are going to start with the JavaScript for this particular random hex color tile generator application. Now it's time to start with the JavaScript part for the project. So for that, we need to use the script.js file. But before that, we need to actually comment out this particular color container code. So if I comment out, if I control save it, then you can see nothing will be visible to the screen except this particular h1 element. Because we are going to generate this particular code by using the JavaScript. So coming back to the script.js, so first we need to get the reference to the container which is this particular element. So I'm going to copy this here and come back to the script.js. So first I'm going to here create the variable of type constant. So here I'm going to use const and then this is actually our container. container element all right so this will be the name of the variable and instead of that i will be using a document dot query selector so here we need to specify the type of this selector so it is actually a class selector so we also need to specify the dot and then the name of the selector then for creating these particular code by using the javascript we need to here use the for loop so i will be using a for then we need to specify the index of this particular for loop so we are going to use here let and then the index of the for loop which is actually started with this zero then we need to actually here use the index smaller than 50 now this 50 value is actually depends upon the number of tiles you want so if you want here 30 then you just need to create here a 30 value means you just need to specify here a 30 if you want to display only 5 then you can simply here specify the 5 so this value will determine how many tiles you want to display inside your project so if i come back to the other version of the application and then we need to here increment the index counter that is this one index plus plus now instead of that we need to actually first create the variable so it is like const and then this will be the color container element that is 
this particular one this will be denoted as a color container element all right so this will be initialized with the document dot create element instead of like query selector because we want to here create the element so create element and what we want to create so we want to create here a division so we need to specify here a div tag that is this one now the color container is created so we need to add the class to the color container element so here we will be using the color container element dot class list so this will be used not children like class list so this is the class list so we want to add a class list so that is the reason we are going to here use the add and then the class name so it is like color container remember the name of the this particular one the color container so this is the name i will be using it here all right uh, so with these two lines of code our division element will be created now under that particular division element we want to create these two elements all right so for that we need to here create the another const variable so const then it is actually a color code element because we want to display the hexadecimal color code so that is the reason i have named here color code element then again we need to use the document dot create element because we want to actually create the element so that is why we are going to use the create element so we want to create here a span element all right so this is a span element now with this line of the code we are actually initialize this creation of the span element to this color code element variable now with the use of that we need to add here a color code like if i come back to the index.html you can see right now inside of the span there is no class list is actually specified but for providing the style means for accessing and providing the code we need to add here a color code to that particular span element okay so that is necessary because i have just added these two things just for the testing purpose but in the real part once we actually developing this we want to actually update this code dynamically because this will be updated multiple times depending upon the value of this particular inside the for loop this particular value it will generate different color codes so that is the reason we need to add a class to this span element so that we can update its value multiple times because we can use that class selector to update its value so here we need to add the color code element and then we need to here use the class list because we want to add the class to this particular element all right and inside of that we need to add the color which is the color code all right and then we need to after specifying the color code we need to actually create this particular hierarchy structure so that is the reason we need to add this inside this particular color container so for that we need to use the append child function so here we need to again use the color code which is the color container element that is this one not color code we need to use the color code color container element not color code so color container element append child we are going to use the append child so what do we want to append so we want to append the color code element so inside of the brackets we need to provide the color code element now this particular color code will be appended to this particular division tag all right so this three lines of the code done got it's actually creating the span element then we are setting the class to the span element and then we are going to append that particular color code span element to the main color container element all right now similar thing we need to perform with the button as well because we want a button so again coming back to script.js we need to here use the const and then we need to here use the copy button element and we need to initialize it with the document dot create element that is this one and instead of that we need to specify the button that is this one button and then instead of that we need to use the copy button element dot inner text so we want to update the button in a text is equal to and then we need to add here copy all right and then instead of the color container element that is the main element because we want to append that button inside this particular division so again we are going to use the here color container dot append child function not append just append child because we want to append this as a child so we need to here specify the copy button element so now we have created this particular structure by using the javascript so coming back to the script.js and after that here 
append this entire thing inside the main container that is this one the main container so here we need to add the color container means the container element not color container main container element append child function again we are going to call the append child and instead of that what we want to contain it's actually a color container because instead of that we have the button and also the span element so here we will be adding the color container element so whatever we have created right now you can see we get our 50 color container elements you can see here because we have appended all of these values now if i want to just display only five i can control save it then you can see i get only five color elements means the five color containers okay so this is how we have created the code by using the javascript dynamically so in the next step is we need to actually randomize the colors of these color tiles and also we want to display the color code inside of this particular span element so for that we need to here create the function so function then we need to here call the random color function now this particular function will be used inside the another function which is actually a generate color function but before creating the generate color function we need to actually complete the code for the random color function because this is the main function that will be randomized the color and inside of the generate color function we are going to use this particular function now inside of the random color function first we need to here create the characters so what i want to do here like cones then we are going to add the cares means the characters that we want inside our color code so we actually want to display this particular characters because the hexadecimal is actually started from zero and then it's actually go up to like f like it has only 16 characters so these are the characters okay and then we need to actually specify the length of the character so again we need to here create the const which is const then we need to here create the color code and then length is equal to 6 because maximum hexadecimal character has only 6 characters including the hash symbol then we need to create here another variable which is let color code color code because this value will be updated multiple times so that is the reason we need to here specify the color code and to randomize the thing we need to here use the for loop so for loop and instead of that we need to here use the let index is equal to zero because the for loop will be started from zero then index is going to smaller than according to the length of the color means the color code length we have specified the six so this loop will be executed only for the six times and then we need to here use the index which is index variable then we need to increment its value and after that we need to come inside the for loop so here we need to create the another variable which is const random number so here we need to use the random num which is short for the random number and then we need to use the math dot floor and inside of the math dot floor we need to use the math math dot random and then we need to multiply its value with the value of the cares dot length that is this particular one right so we will get the random number inside of this particular one and then after that we need to here use the color code and we are going to here use the short syntax property which is also to initialize and also add the value to the color code variable so we are going to use their cares dot substring method so substring and then we need to pass here the random that is this one random number and then we need to pass here random num plus one so substring function does work it's actually a method of the javascript or i can say that the function of the javascript but it is more suitable to actually say it as a method of the javascript so it is actually used to extract the portion of a string it basically takes the two arguments the starting index and the ending index which is actually an exclusive part so from the value of the start index it's going to extract the string all right so basically it's going to extract the string and gives you a new string so what i mean if we take the example of this color code length as a string okay so if i copy that here and uh, if i copy and paste it here so if i just specify a starting index here like five all right five comma nine just i want to do that 
or I can just simply specify 5,9. So it's going to give us what? So it's going to give me the like this particular string because from here it's going to like 6, 7, 8, 9. So it's going to give me a code value. Just it is not very difficult to learn. You can simply Google it. You will get the information about this substring. Now coming back to the our version of the code that is this particular application which is a random hex color tile generator application. Instead of this random color function we want to return a value. So we want to return a color code. So return after the end of the loop we are going to return the color code. So here coming back to the then we want to return the color code. Now this particular function will be used inside the generate color function. So here we choose the generate color function. Now we need to create this particular function. So here we choose the function generate color. Then we need to start its block of the code. Now before adding the code inside this particular generate color function, we want to also create the main container, which is the main container elements that has the reference to this particular color container because we have created the color container by using the for loop that is this one now we need to initialize this color container into the variable globally so that we can create these multiple color containers so here we need to create the another const then this will be the main like i will be here using the main color container elements this is going to be equal to document dot query selector for query selector then we want to specify the type of the selector so it is actually a class selector so we need to specify the dot and then when you specify the name of the selector which is the color container selector so now we have the reference to all of the color container inside this main color container elements variable now by using this particular variable we can actually start the code inside this particular generate color function so here we need to use the for loop not font face we are going to use here a for loop and then to start the block of the for loop so let i is equal to zero because we want to start the index from the zero then i is smaller than main color container value so these particular main containers elements dot length so according to the value of this particular length we want to run the loop and then we want to increment the value of the i variable which is actually used as a counter variable for the for loop then instead of that we want to first create the const variable so this will be the color color container element that is this one color container is equal to and here we need to actually specify the main color container elements i variable value then to here create the another const variable then this is actually a new color code and here we need to call the random color function remember that is the reason we have created the random color function already so this will be give us a random color code and that code will be given to this new color code variable all right and after that we need to create here another variable const this is a color code element and then inside of that we need to use the color container element that is the variable name of this one right color container element dot query selector so here we need to use the query selector inside of that we need to specify the color code class dot and here we need to specify the color code all right the color code is actually the class name for this particular span element all right here so we are specify here a color code selector and after that we want to update the style so we want to update the style for this color container element so here we want to use the color container element so we want to update its style so it's like style dot background color style dot background color is equal to so we want to actually append the hash symbol as well so it's like hash character then we want to add the new color code which will be given by the random color function and then we want to update the color code element 
here we want to use the color code element inner text because we want to display the inner text inner text is equal to again we need to use the hash symbol because we want to display the hash character as well and then you need to use the new color code if i control save it right now you can see nothing will be happen so nothing is happening if i control save it the color should change but uh, there should be a problem in the code so we had just simply created the elements by using this for loop then we have randomized the color and then we created the generate color function we are calling the function we are actually using the main container elements document dot query so here actually having a problem we need to here use the query selector all because this is actually more than once so now you can see we have successfully able to randomize the colors so right now we are actually only seeing the five elements so if we want to add here more than five then to specify the value 50 if i enter here like 500 then we will get the 500 random color tiles you can see here at in front of your screen so i'm just going to here do just only with the 30 right control save it so you can see now we get the 30 color tiles so this is actually also i want to share one more property if i didn't use here a flex wrap then you can see it's actually going in just only one line so that is the reason you need to use the flex wrap inside the container okay so that everything will be presented in the nice way now the next thing that we want to add is actually the copy functionality so whenever we click on the copy button we want to copy this particular code to the clipboard just like in the final version if we click on copy we actually sh show an alert instead of that we see the color code this particular message along with the color code value and then we, we click ok come back to here and if i paste it then you can see the new color code will be pasted and can be used in anywhere inside of your application so let's start adding this particular copy functionality so for that we need to traverse all of these as a array because these are more than 30 means 30 40 so the better approach is we need to use the for each method to actually loop through all of these elements so here i will be coming back to the script.js then here i will be adding main color container dot element then for each instead of the for each i need to specify the anonymous callback that takes an argument which is the color container element so color container not container it's going to like color container element that is calling the container el so it is going to type of arrow function then we need to start its block of the code which is the body and instead of that first we need to create the these two variables so that we can work with these two elements so the first thing is we need to create the const which is the copy button element copy btn element so now we need to use this particular argument so this is the color container el dot then we need to use the query selector now it is actually a single so that is the reason we need to select the query selector here instead of that we want to specify the button because we want to select the button from these particular containers second variable we need to create here second variable which is the color code you can see color code element again we need to use the color container not container it's like color container element query selector instead of that we need to specify this type of the selector so it is like color code selector all right if i control save it so it, the page will be refreshed so every time we refresh we get different colors all right and here we need to set the listener to the copy button so copy button and we need to set the add event listener and uh, instead of this particular one we need to listen to the click listener and here we want to specify the arrow function arrow function and instead of that we need to first create the const variable so which is actually a color code color code is equal to so we want to get the value from the color code element dot inner text we want its inner text and then we need to pass that inner text to the copy clipboard function this function will be created so instead of that we need to pass the 
color code all right now we need to create this particular function so coming back to the outside of this particular for each block so here we need to create the function which is copy clipboard not copy button copy clip board function now this function is going to accept a one parameter so that will be treated as a text so i'm going to name the parameter as text then we need to use the navigator dot clipboard and then we need to actually write the text inside the clipboard so we need to use the write text and here we need to pass the text and then we need to here use the then then and instead of that we need to pass the arrow function then the body of the code and then we need to actually here specify the alert then we need to specify the colon and then the value of the variable that we want to display which is the text all right so this is the navigator then for the error catching here we need to specify the catch block if anything goes wrong so that we will get the error so here we need to specify the another anonymous callback means the function that has no name error the name of the argument then the array of function then we need to start its block of the code instead of that we need to use the console dot log then to start its body inside the console dot log we need to here use the field to copy to clip board fail to copy clipboard and then to specify the error control save it now if i click on copy you can see we get the alert pop-up copy to clipboard and if i copy means click on ok and come back to the next tab paste it then you can see we are successfully able to paste the code because the code is copied to the clipboard now if i refresh then you can see this color i want to copy you can see this color code is copied to clipboard if i come back here and paste the code you can see finally we are able to get the copied code so that marks the completion of the code for this random hex tile color generator application now if you like this module then leave your review because your review definitely going to help me to reach more students and also helps me and motivates me to create more awesome courses like this so thank you for watching and i will see you in the next lecture thank you very much welcome back to this new module so in this module we are going to start creating the note taking application so this will be the final application that we are going to build in this entire module. So you can see when I just simply hover this particular note taking sticker, you can see the color is actually changed to little bit different color of the gray or you can say that the little silver gray of the color. And you can see here we have this green button which is actually having an add note. So when I click on it, then we get a new sticker or you can say that the new note sticker in which we can add a note. So as soon as I enter the data like this first, then we have this second. Okay. And if I just here make it in a proper case, then you can see if I refresh the page, then these nodes are still present inside my particular web page means it is actually stored in the local storage of the browser. And if I want to delete the node, then I can simply click on this trash icon. So that particular node is actually deleted. And if I now refresh, we get the only the node that have a second as a text that is entered inside the particular node and we also have this save icon so if you want you can just click on the save icon to save the data but i have added a logic as soon as i enter the data inside this particular node like this is the third node this is our fourth okay just i am entering some random text here so this will be present inside the local storage of the browser now if i press the f12 key then you can see it's actually going to open the so when I, you press the f12 key you don't get this particular application interface you will get this like element structure so you need to come to this particular application tab of the browser this is actually inside the chrome browser so you need to click on this application under the local storage you will get your file and here you can see this is the node second third and fourth so these are the as soon as i click on the fifth node that is this one and here if i enter another like uh, this is the second so you can see it's actually automatically updated inside the but local storage of the browser under this node key right so this is the what we're going to do and if i just simply remove it you can see it's actually instantly updated inside the particular local storage of the browser 
so this is the application that we're going to build and if i just simply refresh you can see we get these particular nodes that are having the data that we have entered and if i click on these trash icon to delete every node so if i now refresh we will get a blank node which is the required feature because we don't want to show the blank web page we want to show at least a one node inside this particular web page okay so enough talk in the next part we're going to start with the html part of the project which is our note taking application or you can say that the sticky notes application welcome back to this lecture so this lecture we're going to start with the notes taking application html part first so for that you can see that i have already created the three files index.html style.css and script.js file so instead of that i have already linked my style.css file and also the script.js file so before adding any html elements we also need to use the font awesome website so if you go to the google means if you open your browser and simply type the font awesome so this will be the link comes first so just simply click on this font awesome website first link then simply click on the start for free because we need to use the icons so if i show you these are the font awesome icons that is why we need to create the account inside the font awesome so i have already created the account inside the font awesome and you will get a verification email so i have already opened the another email account which is my another email account which i will be using for this tutorial demonstration purpose how to create the account inside the font awesome website and also get the verification link and then also we need to add a one script tag so that we can easily use the font awesome website so i'm going to tell you the step by step procedure so first you need to come back to your again a browser you need to type the font awesome website in the search bar and then once you come to the font awesome website simply click on the start for free and once here you need to add your email id so i'm going to add my another email id so simply click on the set kit embedded code if you click on it then it's going to send the key then you can see check your email so if i again coming back to the other browser window so here you can see now we get the email account font or some website this is the email account so simply click on the confirm your email address so it's going to confirm the email address so here it is going to send ask you to set up let's finish the setting up new password so you can set a password for your website so i'm going to set the password and then also you need to confirm your password once you do that simply click on the set password and continue then simply click on the no thanks because i don't want to say then skip this process because you don't need to create your profile we can do it later on and then you need to copy this font or some line of javascript just the classic way you see font or some so simply click on this particular line because you need to use it so i'm going to just simply click on this particular line because we need to use it and coming back to your visual studio code where we you have created the index.html simply going to paste it here at the top of your script tag okay so that we can use the font awesome website now we have the access to the font awesome website anonymously okay and then if you come back to the icons here you can just simply click on the icons note that one and here you can search for the different icons that you can use for your website or for your project so you can use any of the icons just simply click on it and here you just simply need to use this class or you can add this particular tag simply copy this tag and coming back to your visual studio code where you have added the project so i'm going to here type a button and inside of this button i'm going to paste the icon of the font awesome and then i will be adding the text so it is going to like add and then here i need to add the id to this particular button which is our add btn so i need to also specify the equal to sign and then here i will be typing the id name as add btn if i control save it and coming back to my chrome browser so just coming back to the application where we have search so this is a brave browser this is my chrome browser and if i come back to the chrome browser here i just need to do that okay so the problem is that the window is very small okay now the window is actually so if you can now you can see we have this trash icon actually appearing inside this button okay so we have successfully used the font awesome inside the project but we don't need this trash icon because we want to display the icon that will be look like this one you can see at this particular plus icon so for that i have already noted down the class which is actually a class that i'm going to type the name here inside of that so first i'm just going to remove this one 
so it is going to be f a s then f a then hyphen then it's going to have a plus so if i control save it then coming back to the chrome browser again then you can see now we get this plus icon so our next step is to add more html element to this particular project so let's start adding one by one now first i am going to close all of these particular windows so that i can release the load on my browser because now i have shown you how to use the font awesome the main thing is you need to get this particular anonymous tag and then the class name you need to remember in order to use the icons so i already note down the icons into my notepad so i'm going to use that if you want to use your own icons because you like it you just need to go to the website and simply search for the icons that you want to use simply click on the font awesome website again just wait for the time to load your website and click on the icons like you want to use the plus icons you can use different kinds of icons as your wish okay it's totally up to you you can use the icon as per your wish so at the end of this button we need to add a one div tag so this div tag has an id of main so we need to use the equal operator and then double quotes so this will have the main id now whatever content will be placed is will be added inside the main container and this button will be fixed at the right side of the browser screen so if i you can see this button is placed at the right side of the browser and the position of this button is going to be fixed so if i add multiple like uh, these elements then you can see if i scroll in then still the position of this button is actually fixed okay so this is why this button is going to be styled outside of the main container so that is the reason this button is not being placed inside the main container so after that we need to add some more elements inside it so again where we need to use the div tag for the note and inside of this note we need to create the header which is a tools div and then we need a text area so the tool is going to be like for this one this is will be act as a tool that has a save and this trash icon so here we added a note and then we need to add a, another division which is a tool and inside of that we need to add the two font awesome icons so i'm going to copy the tag and also the class and inside of that i'm going to change the class name so it is going to be like fa hyphen save and then I'm going to duplicate it into one more time by pressing the shift alt and down arrow key and then I will be changing the name to trash okay if I save it then you will see the trash and the save icon inside the browser window and after that inside this tool means after the end of the tool division we need to add the another tag which is our text area then removing all the elements of the text area because we are going to actually update the element of the text area dynamically with the javascript now this entire code i will be commented out once the html part of the project is done because that is why i have added here this code once i done the style part of this whole notes project then i'm going to comment it down and then we will be creating this node by using the dom methods of the javascript okay so if i control save it then you will also see the text area so the html part of this notes taking application is done so our next step is to start with the css part of the application so now it's time to start with the css part of the project which is the note taking application so for that we need to use the style.css file and this style.css file is already linked with this particular link tag so we need to come to this particular style.css file and inside of the style.css file first i'm going to reset the universal selector so I'm going to select the universal selector. Instead of that, I'm going to select the padding and setting it to zero. And then we need to select the margin. So set the margin to zero. And then we need to use the box sizing property to border box. Okay, so you can see now the default styling of the browser is actually changed. Then I'm going to provide the color to the body element. So I'm going to select the body element. And here I will be using the background attribute because I want to use the linear gradient and inside of the linear gradient I'm going to start with the to right and then we need to specify the comma then I will be providing here RGB and instead of that we need to provide the color which is 242, 112 and then 156 and then we need to provide the comma and then again we need to provide the RGB and instead of that we need to provide 255, comma 148, comma and then the value which is 140 if I control save it you can see now the styling of the 
browser is changed by with this particular linear gradient function now it's time to select the main which is the main container so if i come back to the html and here you can see this is the main i have specified the id here so we need to here use the hash symbol because it is an id selector so that is the reason then we need to start its block of the code and instead of the main first i need to provide the minimum height so minimum height is going to like 100 vh right and then we need to provide the padding so padding from bottom because i want padding from bottom that is this one so if i just provide here a 50 pixel which is a padding from bottom and uh, after that i need to here provide the display property so display is going to like flex and inside the display property we need to use the flex wrap so if i know use a uh, flex wrap then if i just simply here add bunch of elements if i didn't use flex wrap then it's going to actually display all the nodes in just only one line in a horizontal way so with the use of the flex wrap we can actually get these elements as soon as the screen is completely filled up you can see if the, there is no space then it's automatically going to adjust the next element to the another row depending upon the viewport of the browser so if i come back to the other version of the application now here we need to also use the justify content so justify content is going to be the center you can see now the elements which is this particular node is actually shifted to the center of the screen and after that i need to use the align items so align item is going to be like a flex start okay so this will be the code for the main which is the main container for this particular node sticker now we need to style this button which is the add button so we need to provide the style code for this particular button because we want to display this button at the right side of the browser all right so we need to select the browser so coming back to the html part of the note taking application so it is also an id so we need to use the hash symbol because it is an id selector then to start its block of the code and inside of the add button we need to first set the position so position is going to be like fixed because we want to fix this text means this button at the right side of the browser window doesn't matter if we scroll if i enter here multiple node sticker then you can see if i scroll to the bottom of the web page still this button is actually present at the right side of the browser so that is because of this particular fixed property so coming back to the our version of the application after specifying the position to fixed then to use the right so from right we want to display a 10 pixel and from top we want to display 10 pixel as well you can change these properties as per your need now you can see the button is actually moved to the right side of the browser screen at the top right corner all right and after that we need to provide the background color because we want to display the button to in a form of green so that is the reason we need to here use the background color property now you can see the color of the button is changed then we want to remove the border property so border we want to set it to zero or you can even set it to none then i need to specify the outline so outline is going to be like none and similarly we want to display the border to be none and you can see the outline and the border is removed from the button then we need to specify the padding so padding is going to be like 10 pixel and i want to display the text to be like background means the color not background we want to use the color which is used to change the color of the font so i want to display the white color you can see now the styling of the button is changed then we need to use the border radius property so border radius is going to be like 5 pixel because we want a little rounded corner of the buttons then we need to change the cursor to pointer and after that we want to change the transitions that is this one which is background color we want to change the background and this is going to be like color and after that we want to provide the 0.3 s is going to like ease all right then we need to change the hover state of the button so i'm going to copy this id selector here then closing its block of the code and after that here we want to provide the pseudo class element which is hover state of the, which is the hover node state which is the hover of the button all right and instead of the hover button we need to provide the background color means the hover code so we need to change the color to so i'm going to provide here not this one this is actually the same color so it is going to like 06 a 006 now if i control save it if i hover it then you can see the color of the button changed to little light version of the green color so this is what we want to achieve 
and after specifying the color code then it's time to specify the style for this particular node so that it will looks like this all right so here coming back to the style.css so instead of that first we need to select the node so coming back to the index.html so here it is actually a node class so i'm going to copy this class it is a class selector so we need to use the dot and then to start its block of the code inside of the node we need to provide the background so first i'm going to provide the background to transparent right and after that we need to here use the margin so margin is going to like 15 pixel from all sides and then we need to use the border radius that is this property border radius is going to like 10 pixel okay and after that we need to use the overflow hidden by control saving you can see we get the rounded corner because this particular icon is cut it out little bit that is the reason the code is applied after that we need to provide the code for the tool so the tool is actually this particular one this is actually a tool all right so coming back to the index.html so copy this class name from here and coming back to the style.css so here we need to use the tool then to provide the code inside this particular tool so first we need to provide the background color so background color we are going to use here hash we want a little darker version of the black okay so if i control save it you can see the color is applied to the button means the tool of the notes sticker okay and then we need to provide the color which is the we want to use the font color so font color we want is a white one you can see now the color of the icons is actually changed then we need to provide the padding so padding is going to be like 5 pixel and then we need to provide the display to flex by control save it you can see there is a changes applied inside this particular node sticker and after that we need to provide the justify content which is actually a flex end because we want to display these two icons at the end of the tool okay which is this particular tool container after that we need to style these icons because it is actually present under this tool division so coming back to the style.css so first we need to select the tool again and then we need to select the i which is the icons tag and then here inside of that first we need to provide the padding because right now they are very close to each other so we need to provide some padding so 5 pixel now you can see there is a difference between these two and then we need to provide the cursor to pointer whenever we hover over these particular icons so we want to display it in a pointer one okay so if i hover it then you can see the color is actually means the cursor is actually changed to pointer one and after that we need to provide the transitions so here we need to use the transition color and this is going to be like 0.3s and it is going to like ease and i'll save it and if i hover over it then you can see there is a our effect is applied but means the transition is not applied because we want to use the hover also so tool then we need select the eye then column then we need to use the hover and then we need to start its block of the code after that we need to provide the color and has symbol then a then we need to provide the a c a one a one control save it and now if i hover it then you can see the color of these particulars are actually now changing after that we need to modify this particular text area which is under the node so if i come back to the index.html so under the node we have this text area tag so we need to provide the style code for this text area so we need to select the text area so first we need to select the node then we need to select the text area and then we need to start its block of the code instead of that i'm going to select the width so width is going to like 300 pixel you can see now the width is changed and i think i have actually added the 100 percent zoom so yeah it is actually the 100 percent zoom of the web browser okay so you can change these dimension as per your need then we need to provide the border node break we need to use the border so border we want a border to none means the we want to reset the border to none you can see now the border of the text area is removed okay if i just remove this property here save and you can see there is a border and if i just use this property now you can see the border is removed from this particular text area and then we need to provide the minimum height so minimum height is going to like 220 pixel 220 pixel then we want to actually remove this so that we can actually avoid this resizing of this particular like uh, text area so for that we need to use here uh, a resize property of the text area to none the control save it and you can see it's actually resized if i refresh it you can see it's actually come back to its default width and also the 
height after specifying the resize property when to use the padding so if i enter here sometimes you can see it's actually very at the edge of the text area so we want to apply some padding also so i want to apply a 10 pixel padding if i now control save it you can see now there is a padding between these text and the edge of the text area all right this is the padding property inside the note taking application of the text area okay and then to use the font size so font size i want to actually display in the 16 pixel and then we want to display the text in a form of white okay white text by control save it now you can see the text is actually white but if i select it you can see the text so we want to change the background color of this note text area so the first thing is we want to actually apply the overflow hidden okay so if there is anything then it's going to hide the overflow area of the thing then we need to use the background color so background color is like 393e46 you can see now the background color is applied all right and then we need to actually apply the another property which is the border radius so border radius we want actually zero pixel because we don't want to apply the border radius from every side if i just apply a property like 20 pixel border radius you can see we will actually end it up with this particular output so we don't want that one we want the rounded border from just only at the left left and from the right bottom means from the left bottom of the note taking area which is the text area from the left bottom and from the right corner of from the bottom side okay and this is actually zero pixel then zero pixel then 10 pixel and then also a 10 pixel if i control save it you can see we get these particular rounded corners of the text area you can see and you can see here all right so that is what we actually achieved here and then we need to add the transition so i'm going to copy the transition code like from this one and coming back to here and pasting it then i'm going to copy this one also and pasting it here closing its block of the code and then we need to use this pseudo class element like hover and inside of that we need to use the background color so it is going to copy paste it and here inside of that what actually we want to do we want to change the color so it is like 2 9 and 3 e 4 6 all right if i control save it now if i hover it you can see the color is actually changing inside the text area next thing we want actually whenever we are inside then we actually want to avoid the outline so for that we need to actually use the another property just in some cases in some browser this property may can cause a problem means in just only for the ui part so we need to set the focus state of the text area to none not auto none control save it now if i remove the attached you can see this is what we actually ended up it will almost look like similar to this particular one which is the final version of the application this is our version of the application that we are actually developing in this entire module so yeah that is for the css part for the note taking application so from the next video onwards we are going to start with the javascript part for the note taking application so now it's time to start with the javascript part for the project which is the note taking application so for that we need to use the script.js file now instead of that first we need to get the reference to these particular element which is the add note and also the reference of this main element now before starting the code inside the javascript first i'm going to come back to the style.css i'm going to just simply selecting this note one which is the note division because we want to add this note division like dynamically so i'm going to comment it out these particular things okay this is the node division so i have actually commented out right now if i control save it you can see we are just having only one element present that is this particular add node which is the button and also this main one so we need to get the reference of these two ones inside the script.js so we are going to use the query selector and initializing it inside the variable so first is the add btn so i'm going to name my variable as add btn then document dot query selector now it is actually a query selector so we need to specify the type of the selector as well by adding the hash symbol and also the add btn the name of the id selector all right then i'm going to duplicate this particular code by pressing the shift alt and down arrow key 
And after that here it is actually a main container which is the main division. So I am going to change it to main. Alright and if I control save it you can see we have these reference of these particular element inside these particular variables. Then after that we need to set the listener to the button which is the button because whenever we click on this button we want to display a node. If I click it here then you can see then there is a new sticker added to the web browser. So that is what we want to achieve. So add event listener. So we want to listen to the click event. So on click of the button we want to add the listener. After that we need to specify the comma and here we need to specify the add node which is the callback that we want to create. Alright, so first is the click, then second is the add node. We have added the listener to the button, so the here we need to use a function, then add node, and then to start its block of the code. After that, we need another function which is a function which is actually for the save node. Okay, then we need to use the save node function. Alright, and then we need another function to actually load the node from the local storage of the browser so these are the three functions that are required so first we need to create these node sticker dynamically by using the javascript so for that we need to create the code means with that we need to add the code inside the add node function so we want to create a node so i'm going to create the constant of the node then we need to initialize it so we need to first here use the document that is this one document dot create element so we want to create the element so we want to create the division element all right remember the structure of the code we actually having a division and then these are the things that we need to create all right so coming back to the script.js again after creating the variable of the division which is a node then with the use of this particular node variable we need to add the class so we are going to add the class by using the class list and we want to add a node class list so coming back to you can see here we have a class node so we want to add the class it, which is actually a node so here i'm going to specify the node all right then to terminate that particular code after that we need to update its inner html so inner html inside of that we need to use the template string so that i can split the code into multiple lines all right so this is this template string which is a key present at the top of your tab key and also at the bottom of the skip key instead of that we need to actually create the html structure that is this particular html structure so i'm going to copy this particular html structure which is the division tag and after that we need a text area and inside the division under the class tool we have these particular i tags which is the font awesome tags so we need to just simply copy these lines of the code and coming back to the html part means the script.js part here we need to paste it then i'm going to format this particular one for way so the text area part is not actually copied so we also want a text area coming back to the script.js again after the end of the division we need to paste the text area code as well okay so this is what we have now done with the template string after creating the note then we need to get the reference of these particular ones inside the variables all right these are the three elements the first is the save icon the second is a trash icon then also a text area so with the use of this note variable we need to get the reference of these one inside the variables so here we need to create the const and the first is the trash icon equal to then we need to use the note dot query selector because we need to actually specify the type of this selector as well so here it is actually a class selector so we need to specify the dot and also the trash all right now we need to add this class name inside this particular one because these are the class names of the font awesome for the styling of the tags so that we can get these tags so these are the names used by the font awesome but we need to actually provide our own name of the class so that we can use it and apply the code so for that here we need to use the trash so trash this will be the name for the trash icon and then here we need to use the save this will be the name for the save icon which is the class name then i'm going to duplicate this code into multiple times then this will be our save icon and here we need to provide the class name as save you can see and then we need to use the text area which is the text area tag 
and here we need to specify the text area because it is actually a tag so we just need to only specify the name of the tag now we have the reference of these all three elements inside these particular variables so now we can set the listeners to these particular variables all right so here we need to first set the trash icon so trash icon add event listener instead of that we need to listen to the click so whenever we click on the trash icon we want to remove the note so here i will be using the arrow function which is an anonymous function that function without any name so it will be like arrow function actually here we need to add the arrow this is the arrow function okay and inside of the arrow function we need to just simply use the note dot remove that is this particular function all right and then we need to call the save notes so whenever we remove the notes we need to call the save notes function right now it is not going to do anything because we have not specified any code inside the save note function all right so this is the code for the trash icon then whenever we enter any data inside the text area we want to actually call the save note function all right and also whenever we click on the save function means the save icon we want to save the data of the note so here we need to use the save icon dot add event listener add event listener instead of that we need to listen to the click listener and here we need to call the save note function is the callback and then inside the text area that is this one we want to listen to the input of the text area because we don't want to click on it we want to listen to the input of the text area and then we need to call this save note function again all right now it's time to specify the code inside the save note function but before that whatever we have done inside this particular one we need to append it to the main that is this one all right so here we need to use the main dot append child that is this one append child instead of that we need to pass the note because at the end we want to attach the note to the main container and that is done with this particular line of the code if i control save it and if i click on button you can see we get the node now if i click on trash icon you can see we are able to remove the node but if i just enter some data here and if i refresh it you can see the note is also refreshed and also the data of the text is washed out because we have not added the code for the save note function so coming back to the script.js now it's time to specify the code inside this particular save note function so here i'm going to create the variable of the notes because we want to store the notes so it is actually a notes that is a one document dot get element by id or i can use here a query selector all because we want to select all the notes that is the reason we have actually named the variable as notes and i'm going to use the query selector because if there is more than one notes then we want to select all of them so that is the reason of class by using the note so that is why i have used here a query selector all and under that note we have the text area so we want to select all the text area okay so you know, that will be referenced will all of these reference means all of the reference of these particular text area will be stored inside this notes variable which is a type of constant variable then we need to use the const data and it is actually of type array all right so we are going to define an array of type data now i have pressed the control s that is the reason everything is actually refreshed because we are actually using the live server extension that is the reason the things is actually changed inside the browser now we want to look through all the nodes and we want to push those nodes values inside the local storage of the browser by using the push function of the array so for that i will be using here a loop which is the traditional for loop so here is the for loop and instead of the for loop i will be using the let i is equal to zero okay and after that we need to use the i is smaller than according to the length of the nodes so nodes dot length we want to run this particular loop according to the length of the available nodes then we need to increment the counter all right and after that inside of that we need to use the data because we want to post the content inside the data array so we want to push it by using the push function of the array all right now the things according to the values like nodes means the value according to the so if there is a zero suppose we have like these two nodes 
So this is actually present at the zeroth index. This is actually present at the one index. First, the content of this particular text area means this particular node will be pushed to this array when the value of the counter is actually zero. Because right now it's going to run only for the two times for the zero and the another way is actually for the one. Okay, then in the second index, it's going to add the data, right? So this is how the loop will be works here. According to the value of this particular i, it's going to push the data inside this particular array. All right. And here, after that, we need to actually push what? We want to push the value. We don't want the tag. We want to push the value of the text area, which is actually a reference store inside the node. Actually, I press the control as inside the browser because my cursor inside the browser so after adding the code i have actually pressed the control s again that is the reason these everything is actually washed out from the browser window after adding this particular for loop we want to store this particular data inside the local storage as well so for that we need to use the data so if the length of the data is actually equals to zero so first we need to add the condition if it is equal to zero then we want to actually perform the if block so we want to remove everything from the local storage so first we need to select the local storage remove items means the length of the nodes means the array is actually empty now this particular array is actually denoting the data inside the local storage of the browser means if the data is zero the length of the array is zero it means there is nothing inside the nodes so that is the reason we want to remove the local storage as well so local storage remove item and here we need to remove what we want to remove the nodes key okay this is actually the nodes key that we want to remove then we need to perform the else block inside of the else we want to use the local storage again local storage we want to set the item so what we want to set we want to set the nodes so here we need to set the nodes and we want to set these particular nodes inside the json format by using the stringify means creating the json in a form of string so that it will become easy for us to actually get the data once we are actually starting the code inside the load node function so you can see now we are able to save the data inside the browser so if i refresh it if i enter here some data and if i just refresh it you can see now the web page means the note is not present here but the data will be saved inside the browser storage now if i press the f12 key and i come back to the local storage at the port number you can see that thing that i have added here is actually presented now if i can here delete it and if i again click it here we get the node sticker so this is you can see as soon as i enter the data it's actually updated inside the browser storage as well because we are actually listening to the input listener of the text area control save it now the page is refreshed and we also not able to see the ui part of the node but we are actually able to save the data inside the local storage of the browser in a form of json you can see here it is actually stored in a form of json now it's time to start the code inside the load node so i'm going to close this particular console window like this one because i want to start the code inside the load function once we are done with it then we are going to test the entire application again inside of the load node function we want to load the node so first we need to here create the variable which is actually ls nodes which is short for the load nodes then we need to actually parse the data so that is the reason we have actually converted the code means to save the node in the form of json so we can call the json dot parse function so we want to parse the local storage of the browser so here we need to use the local storage dot so we want to get the item so here we actually set the item to the local storage now we need to get the data from the local storage so for that we have the get item function inside the get item function we need to specify the key so we want the nodes because we are setting the data in a form of nodes key so remember both of these key names should be same otherwise you will face some issues so once we are getting the reference of the local storage in this particular nodes variable that is the ls nodes after that we need to here check for the condition condition so if ls nodes is not equal to null all right if not equal to null then we want to perform the ls nodes for each so here i will be using the for each that is this one for looping the things 
So it has a one counter, then there is the anonymous callback. So here I will be using the note text. If you know the for each loop, this is the for each, and instead of that, we need to start the block of the code. So I have actually started the wrong block of the code. Instead of that, we need to start the block of the code. Now we are actually not getting any error. Instead of that, we need to call the add note function because we want to add the note, which is actually the UI part of the note. That is the reason. Now, if I control save it, and now if I enter here some data, which is FTM, now if I refresh it, you can see still it is not actually doing anything because we need to call this particular load note function. So, here we need to use the load. So, it is actually a load notes function because we are actually loading multiple nodes so here we need to call this function that is the reason nothing is actually happening so i have actually changed the name of the function now we actually call the load node function and if i control save it you will see nothing because we need to specify more code inside this particular load nodes function all right so this is the if condition under the if condition we are actually calling the add node function and also after calling the add node function we need to set the values inside these particular nodes okay so what we want to do here we need to create some variable which is notes is equal to and then here we need to use the document that is this one document dot query selector all and instead of that we need to specify like load dot note and text area so this particular note is actually denoting these conditions that is the condition for this note because the variable remember this is actually the node so the same condition because under the node we have the text area so we want to display the ui part so that is the reason we actually getting the reference of the node and the text area as well and after that we need to here use the constant which is for the last notes last node so for that we need to add here a logic a little bit like this nodes which is the array because we are getting everything in a form of array means this is actually treated as an array because there are multiple like nodes like more than one and two so those will be treated as an array so that is the reason we are actually here using the array notation and then we need to use the nodes dot length minus one so that we are actually getting everything at the perfect position so what i mean here if i enter here first then this will be the second and if i refresh it so whenever we actually load the nodes from the local storage then we are getting these particular nodes in a proper order so that thing will be achieved by using this particular condition all right after that we need to actually use this last note value which is the dot value is equal to note text because the text that is actually presented inside this particular looping element because we are actually looping by using the for each so the text will be present inside this particular note text and then we are actually setting it with the use of these particular logics all right now if i control save it and once if there is if condition is executed then we want to execute the else block so here we need to specify the else block instead of that we need to again call the add note if there is nothing present inside the local storage then still we want to display a blank note if i control save it and if i refresh it you can see there is things are actually not working but if I actually add here add note function, means click on the add note button. If I enter here data and now if I refresh it, we are not able to see the nodes. So there is any like there is some problem here. If I actually increase the size of the windows, if I press the F12 key here, if I come back to console, so here we are actually getting some error like uh, type error, ls.note function is not defined. So why we are actually getting error here ls dot note so we are actually getting the error okay so here I made a typo it is like for each note for ag if I control save it and now if I actually come back to the browser you can see now our code is working because this data is actually stored inside the local storage of the browser if I press the F12 key here and if I just simply go to here like application under the local storage you can see here we are actually getting the data if i just remove it and call it as first you can see it's actually instantly updated now if i refresh it you can see it's actually still present if i add another note you can see that is actually also added inside the browser all right now if i remove this particular line of the code like if i comment it out and if i now refresh it 
you can see we are facing some issues because we are not able to add the nodes in a proper way so that is the reason this particular logic is actually very important and how i ended up with this particular idea i just experimented a lot with this particular project all right and when i refresh the page then we are able to see the blank node if i don't call the add node function here control save it so if i just simply first remove every node or right, if i refresh it then you can see there is no blank node is appearing which is the default behavior of this particular application if i remove everything then still we are getting this particular blank node so this is because we actually need to call this add node function in the else block of the load nodes if there is nothing is present inside the local storage then still we want to display a one node ui i can an empty node so that a user can enter the data okay so that's it for this particular project which is a note taking application so if you like this module then please leave your review your review motivates me to create more awesome content like this so thank you for watching and i will see you in the next lecture thank you very much so welcome back to this module so in this module we will build the dictionary application by using html css and javascript so this application is actually going to use an api so it is going to be fetch data from the api so let me first show you the application that we are going to build in this particular module so this will be the final project that we are going to build in this entire module you can see it has this nice orange background color which is a linear gradient effect then we have this orange button that has an hour effect and then we have this enter a word input type and we have this heading which is english dictionary so if i enter here like a word like frog and simply click on search then you can see we get this nice card like structure in which we get the result that the word is frog part of speech noun definition a small tidiness aflamania like whatever blah 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 is actually written here you can just simply read it it's a part of speech like verb or definitions to hunt or trap frogs now this is actually the data coming from the api so this will be the api that we're going to use which is like api dot dictionary api dot dev so this is the url you can simply visit that particular url by just typing this particular name into the url section of your browser and you will actually get this particular web page if you not then i have a text file attached to this particular lecture inside of that text file you can simply copy that link and simply paste it here so here you can see if i actually replace this url by using the word which is we have typed in the application which is like frog you can see this is the data like a photonic verb and you can see this is the definition that i have fetched you can see here this will be the definition and then we have actually fetched the meanings as well like this is the meaning parts of speech you can see here is a noun so this is the data that i have fetched from the application all right means this particular api and then i format that data and display inside this particular html elements also this particular application has this functionality which is the speak functionality so if i click on this particular word it's going to like uh, speak for that particular word which is fro right now actually my volume is too low so if i increase the volume here like uh, i need to increase the volume if i click on frog you can see it's actually say a frog if i enter here a different word like a dog simply hit enter then you can see it's actually a different word if i click on dog you can see it's actually going to display the word which is dog means the speak the word dog okay so this will be the application that we're going to build in this entire module but before completing this preview section of this particular part of the project the second thing you need is actually the json formatter because this particular extension you need to install into your browser i am actually using a chrome so i have actually installed this one because right now if i just simply disable this particular extension like this json formatter like if i preview it and simply if i just simply click on raw then you will data will be look like this it is the raw form of the data which is provided by the api so when you just simply paste the like you are inside your browser then you will actually see the data in this particular structure now this data is actually hard to read so that is the reason we need to actually find a way so that is the json formatter extension comes very handy because it's going to format the data so that we can easily understand it and we can work with it so you can see now it's actually going to 
format the data in a form of array of objects or you can say that the javascript object notation it's the full form of the json is like that it contains the objects in a form of array you can see here we can see it's actually an array like photonics is an array then we have these definitions we have multiple definitions you can see here those are actually like uh, specified in the form of array all right so this particular extension is required also for the animation and icon for this particular application in order to use this icon and the animations then we need to use this particular website as well which is the cdnjs.com slash libraries slash font hyphen awesome so you need to visit to this particular url as well again this particular url is also placed in that particular text file that is attached with that particular lecture all right so you just need to copy this particular first link and you need to paste it inside your index part of the html means inside the head part of your index.html so you need to just simply click on copy and just you need to paste it inside your head section of the file of the index.html or whatever name you have written to your file all right so these are the things that you need to set up before actually follow the next lecture so from the next lecture onwards we are going to start with the html part of the project now for the html part i have already created the files inside the visual studio code you can see here it is our index.html this is our style.css and this one is our script.js file all of these two files are linked inside my like uh, index.html file with this particular link tag i have linked my css file and with the use of this script tag i have linked my script.js file and all of these files are actually present in the same directory so that is the reason i have directly specified the name of the files now before moving forward i have also launched the application inside my browser with the use of the go live server extension and i have opened the final version of the application that we want to build in this entire module and in the previous video which is the preview part of this english dictionary application i have added the and show you the links that you need to paste inside the head section of your index.html so this is the step that we're going to do first here so this is the website which is cdnjs.com so this website you need to just simply search cdnjs.com and you will get this particular first link so simply click on that particular first link and you will end it up with this particular web page so you just need to simply copy this copy link tag this middle one you just need to click on that and then you can see it's actually copied into our clipboard then you need to come back to our visual studio code inside the index.html so simply here inside the head tag you need to simply paste that particular code now i'm going to click on view and word wrap so that you can see everything in just only one window i'm going to control save it so now we have integrated the font awesome into our project so that we can actually create this particular icon if i enter here like some word and if i click on search then this is the icon you can see this is actually achieved by using this particular link tag means if we want to create this icon we need this cloudflare like css which is the min.css file of the font awesome so after doing this we want to specify the html elements so let's get start with it so first thing is we need to create this heading then we need an input type then a button and then we need the result container so this is a separate container so we are going to create here two containers the first is the main container and inside of that we need to create the search container and then the result container so this project is actually divided into two sections so coming back to the other version of the application and here inside the index.html first i'm going to actually create some spaces then i'm going to here create the h1 tag and this is going to be our english dictionary so i'm going to name it here english dictionary if i control save it you can see this will be the output printed on to the browser so i'm going to just adjust the view of the browser a little bit more okay and after that we need to create the container so here i am going to use the container and simply pressing the tab key which is a short emit plugin so actually i made a typo it is like container and inside of the container we need to place this h1 element because everything will be presented inside the container all right so after creating the h1 element and uh, then i'm going to here wrap this inside the header because this will be act as a header so i'm going to use here a different approach you can just simply leave it or you can use your own approach if you want if you want to follow along with me so i'm going to use this particular approach because later on i'm going to style this also so that is the reason i have used here a different approach for creating this h1 element 
all right so this will be the header for the application then we need to create here a search container so again we need to create here another div so this will be our search container and i'm going to press the tab key instead of that we need to first create the input type so this will be our input type so the type is going to be text because we want to deal with the words then we need to specify the id so this id is going to be used for the javascript purpose so input and then we need to add here some placeholder so the placeholder text is like enter a word so this will be the placeholder text used for the input type then we want a button also so here we need to use the button and the text that i want to display inside the button is this one which is the button you can see we get the input type and also the button then we need to specify the id inside this particular button so it is like search and it is like ptn so i can just simply name, name it entirely which is like button so this will be the search button all right then after that we need to add here another container which is the result container so this will be like result container pressing the tab key and instead of that we need to press the means specify the h2 element so this will be our word title word title and this one be and again we need to add here another code this will be our division and this is going to be like id word description word description and this will be our division and inside of that we need to provide the id and this is going to be like audio container audio container and instead of that we need to add the button so this button is for the speak functionality purpose so this is like audio button so here we need to specify the id audio button and then we need to specify the icon so this will be going to be like uh, i tag so i am going to use here i tag and this is the closing tag then we need to specify the class so this will be the font also icon so fa fa and then it is going to be like volume volume up icon so that i want so you can see here we get this particular button with the icon volume up all right so this is what we get with this particular code so i'm going to here use it this way oh i can just simply do it okay it's actually removed because i have pressed the space not like that it is like this one okay so that is i think done everything correctly now we also need to add here id also so id this will be like result container so this will be the id for the project which is result container then this is a class then we have word title word description audio container and here i have made a typo which is like audio button not audio so yes everything is done we have done with all the html elements and these will be like updated with the use of the javascript dynamically because we are going to update it at runtime all right so that is for the html part for this english dictionary application in the next part we're going to start with this css part of the project so now it's time to start with the css part of the project but before moving forward we need to actually change the id name a little bit so here i have actually used the same name as like the class name so i need to here make a difference so i'm going to use here a result hyphen container so this will be the id name for the result container okay so now i'm going to control save it and then i'm going to actually open my style.css file and inside of this particular file first we need to select the body element so here i'm going to select the body element so this is the body element and inside of the body element we need to select the margin so i'm going to first reset the default styling which is the browser style which is margin 0 padding 0 then i'm going to use the background so this will be like i am going to use here a linear gradient color so that is the reason i am actually here use the background then it is going to like to write to write then comma and not a dot here we need to specify the comma and after that we need to specify the color code so the first color code is like f f e or i can say 7 e and then we need to specify 5 f so this will be the first color for the gradient then again we need to use the hash symbol then f e b then 4 7 b so this will be the color code now if i control save it you can see the default styling and also the background color which is a linear gradient color is actually applied to the background of the project then i need to change the font family 
so font family i will be using here uh, like arial and then i'm going to remove this helvetica one okay and then control save it and you can see now the font of the project is also changed so that's it for the body part of the project then i'm going to select the container but instead of that everything is actually presented so the first thing is i'm going to specify the max width to the container which is going to be like 600 pixel and after that i'm going to specify the margin so margin is going to be like 200 pixel and from left and right it is going to be like auto and then it is like padding which is going to be like 20 pixel if i control save it you can see now our content is actually moved a little bit from the top to 200 pixel all right and now i'm going to specify the background color so background color is going to be hashtag three times f Control save it you can see now the background color is applied to the project after that for getting the rounded corners we need the border radius property not a border we need a border radius property which is like 8 pixel of the border Control save it you can see now we get the rounded corner borders then we need to apply the box shadow property which is like 0 then we need to apply a 2 pixel then for the blurness it is going to like 4 pixel then rgpa function so 0 0 0 and then the alpha is going to like 0 0.1 now we get a little bit of the box shadow and after that we need to use the animation so animation is actually we want to create here a fade in animation because our project has an animation also which i have shown you in the preview part of the project so this animation keyframes we need to create it so i am going to create this animation keyframe here so the first thing is we need to use here add create keyframe then we just specify the identifier so identifier is like fade in and then we need to use here a zero percent and after that we need to also use here a like a zero percent we need to also use here a hundred percent inside of the zero percent we need to specify the code which is the opacity so it is like opacity so opacity is going to be like zero and then we need to use the transform or oh, translate animation so translate so we want to translate it at the y-axis so it is like minus 20 pixel and then in the 100 percent we want to just simply want these two properties i'm going to copy these two properties then we need to change the opacity to one and translate and translate by to zero if i control save it you can see we get this slide animation or you can say that the fade in animation okay so this is for the fade in animation we have specified the keyframes all right so after doing this we need to style the header so after the end of the keyframes here we need to add the code for the header so header then to start the block of the code so we want our header to be at the center of the screen so text align we are going to add the center so text align with center and then we also need to add some bottom margin so margin bottom is going to like 20 pixel okay so this is for the header then we need to change the color of the h1 to little lighter version of the black so here we want to specify the h1 element and then we need to add the color because we actually want to change the foreground color which is the font color so hashtag three times three so this will actually lighter this particular heading color all right so that is for the h1 element then after that we need to add the code for the search container so this will be the code for the search container so i'm going to cross check it the name of the search container which is the search container here so copy it and i'm going to paste the name because i don't want to make any typo during the name of the search container so the first thing is we need to set the display so display is going to be like flex and after that we need to set the align items property so align items is going to be like center and then we need to set the margin bottom property so margin bottom is going to be like 20 pixel all right so this will be the code applied for the search container you can see there is a, some changes applied to the search container and then we need to actually style this input type so here i'm going to select the input then we need to specify the type so i'm going to use here the array brackets type and we need to specify the input type which is actually of text then we need to start this block of the code instead of that first we need to specify the flex so flex is going to be one all right you can see now the input type actually flex increase means the width of the input type increase then we need to add the padding so padding is going to be like 10 pixel okay after applying the padding then we need to add the font size property so font size is going to be like 16 pixel and then we need to add the border radius property so that we get the rounded corners which is like 4 pixel and then we need to add the border so we want to remove the border so when i do that then if i just simply click on it then we get this particular active state of the input type 
So that is for the input type. Now we need to style the button. So here we need to select the button. So the first thing is we need to actually add some padding. So padding from left and right it's going to like 10 pixel and then from means top and bottom is going to be 10 pixel and from left and right is going to be 50 pixel. So 50 pixel is too much for that particular button. So I'm going to actually set it to 20 pixel. You can see now the button is getting this particular effect of the padding and then we need to add the font size. So font size is going to like 16 pixel. Then we need to add the background color. So background color hashtag. Then we need to add the background color which is seven. This is the color that we want. So if I control save it, you can see we get this particular color to the button. Then we need to remove the border. So the border is going to be like none. Okay, and then we need to add the color property. So color is going to be hashtag three times f. If I control save it, you can see the border is actually removed. Then we want the border radius which is actually give us a rounded corner borders and then we need to add the margin left property because right now they are very close to each other there is no margin there is no gap between the button and the input type so we want to apply the margin left property if i just simply select the input type now you can see there is a 10 pixel margin between these two elements all right then we need to add the cursor property so this is like our cursor cursor is going to be like pointer when we hover over the button then we need to add the transition the transition we want to transition at the background and then we just specify the hyphen then it is going to the background color then 0 0.3s or 35 it is like 3s and then we need to use the ease one then we need to add the button hover state to the effect and here colon and then we need to use the hover after that, we need to add here a background color. So background color is going to be like FF6C4A. Control C if I hover over it, then you can see the darker version of the orange color. Alright, so this will be the button color. Now the next thing is we need to style this particular hover element also, means this particular result container and also this particular button. So first we need to select the code for the result container. So it is like result container so i'm going to cross check the name of the result container so the id name okay so we actually want to use the class name so it is like result then capital c and then the container so i'm going to paste it here result container all right and then inside of that we need to add the code so again i'm going to check it yes so we have the class name result container okay so then we need to add the display property here so display is going to be like none all right and then we need to add the background color first so background color it's going to be like we want a background color which is going to be white and then we need to add the padding so padding is going to like 20 pixel you can see here we have the padding 20 pixel then we want to add the border radius so border radius is going to like 4 pixel and then we need to add the box shadow property so box shadow is going to be 0 then 3 pixel then 6 pixel and then we want a rgba function so here we want our gpa so this is the value that we want to use border then we want the animation so animation and we actually want the slide in animation which is the duration is going to like 0.35 sec s so we want to create the keyframes for the slide in animation so again here we need to use the add the rate then keyframes then we need to specify the identifier name which is going to be like slide in all right and inside of that we need the zero percent case and then we want the actually we actually are going to use the same code so i'm going to copy the keyframes from here copy it coming back to the slides version which is the slide inversion and instead of that we just need to here change the values to 10 pixel and then this value is going to be zero and this value remains same so this will be the slide in animation all right so this will be used means the result will be displayed once we actually going to update the data by using the javascript so we have set the display to none so that is the reason nothing is going to be visible here so once we actually inside the javascript we are going to set it to again log level then we are going to update the code so now i'm going to add the css so in order to see the css like if i enter here some content like if i enter here like content just as a word here content copy it and again i'm going to paste it here 
and coming back to style.css and I'm going to comment out this particular code for just to see the CSS in working. You can see right now the CSS will be look like this. So I'm going to style this audio button as well and also these particular elements so that it will look like a little bit more unique and beautiful or I can say that thing looks a little bit better. So after the end of the keyframes of this slide in, we need to add our H2 element. So again, selecting the H2 element here and changing the color just like we have changed the color of the heading. And after changing the color, we need to use the word description. So coming back to the index.html. So this is the word description. So I'm going to copy this particular from here. So it is an ID selector. So we need to use the hash symbol because it is an ID selector. And then we need to add the margin top property. So margin top is going to like 10 pixel. Control save it. And then we need to add the like code for the UL list because the content that we're going to update it, this particular one. So we're going to add the UL tag and the ally tag dynamically by using the JavaScript. So here we need to use the UL tag. So I'm going to write the CSS already means I'm going to write the CSS first so that we don't need to come back to the CSS part once we start with the JavaScript. So here first we need to set the list style. So list style is going to be like none. And then we need to add the padding. So padding is going to be zero. And then we also need a list element, which is the ally tag. So opening and closing the bracket of the ally tag. And then we need to add the margin bottom, which is going to be like 10 pixel. Okay. And then we need to add here a strong because we also need a strong tag. So instead of that, we need to use the font weight to bold. Not bolder, we want the font weight to bold. And then we need to add the audio container. So again, here we need to use the hash symbol. The audio container is like this one. So copy it, the name, and then I'm going to paste it here. The audio container. Inside of the audio container, we need to add the text alignment. So the text alignment is actually going to be the center. You can see now the button is moved to the center of the container. And then we need to actually here use the margin top to 20 pixel. Alright, and then we also need here audio button. So this is the ID of the audio button. Then again, it is an ID selector. So we need to use the hash symbol. Then the name of the container means the name of the selector, which is audio button. And then instead of that, we need to specify the code. So the first thing is we need to specify the padding. So from padding from both sides is going to be like 10 pixel. And then we need to add the font size. So font size is going to be like 24 pixel, which will increase the size of the button. Then we need the background color. So background color is going to like hash symbol FF7E5. So this will be the color we want to use. And then after that, we need to use the color. So color, which is the foreground color, which is going to be the white. All right. And then we need the border. So border is going to be like none. And then we need to add the border radius. So border radius is going to like 50% so that it will be uh, like a rounded button. You can see now we get the rounded button just like this one. All right, which is the border radius. And then we need to add the cursor pointer. So when we hover over it, it will become the pointer cursor. Means the arrow is changes to like cursor or like a pointer. Then we need to add the transition. So transition is going to like background color. So it is like 0.3s. And then we are going to use the ease one. Then I'm going to copy it and I'm going to paste it here and then closing the body of the element. Then here I'm going to use the hover. And then I'm going to add the background color. So it is like a symbol. And then FF6C4A. So if I hover over it, then you can see the darker version of the orange color. Alright, so this is the audio button hover code. So that's it for the CSS part of the project. Now again, coming back to the main code where we have started the result container code. So I'm going to set it to display to none because we are going to update the result container display property by using the JavaScript, which is the next part of the project of our English dictionary application. So now it's time to start with the JavaScript part for the project, which is the English dictionary application. So for that, we need to use the script.js file. Now inside of this particular file, first we need to get the reference of the variables. So we need to get the reference of this input type, this button, which is the search button. And then we need to also get the reference of all of the elements that is present under this particular result container. And also we need to get the reference of this result container 
because whenever we click on the search button we want to perform the slide animation and want to display the result container so coming back to the script.js again so first here i need to create a bunch of variables so the first thing is we need to create here the search input so it is like search input and we need to get the id so we are going to use the document dot get element by id function so instead of that we need to actually specify the input type which is this search input which is this particular id so we coming back to the index.html so this is the search input copy the name and i'm going to paste it here then i'm going to actually duplicate these lines of code multiple times and here i'm going to change the name of the variable so this is like our search button so i'm going to come back to the index.html so this is the search button copy the name of the id and i'm going to replace the name of the id from here then the third variable that we want is the result container so it is like result container and then we need to get the id of the result container so this is the id of the result container coming back to the script.js and here i'm going to replace the name of the result container which is the id name of the result container then the fourth variable we need is the word title then coming back to index.html so this is the word title again i need to paste the name of the id then this is actually our word description and coming back to index.html this is the word description and here we need to paste the name of the word description then we need to add here audio button and coming back to index.html this is the audio button and then pasting the name of the audio button so everything is perfectly done we can now get the reference of all of the html element inside the javascript variables so now we need to set the listener to this particular button so we want to click on this particular button and want to perform the thing so we need to add the listener which is the click listener so we want to handle this particular click listener so here we need to add the click and then we need to perform here an anonymous callback which is the arrow function all right then we need to start its block of the code all right and then instead of that we need to call the search function so this function we need to call not search button actually we want a search function also when we press the enter key inside this input type so we will also want to call that particular search function so again here we need to use the search input so we need to set the listener to the input as well so we are going to listen to the key up input of the so this is the input we are going to listen and then we need to start the block of the code here we need to specify the equal to sign arrow function instead of that we also need to call the search search function like this one and here instead of that we need to pass the event as well because we also need to hear listen to the event and then inside of the event means inside of the search block we need to check for the condition if there is an event so we need to check event dot key so if it is equals to equals to enter key because whenever we press the enter we want to call that particular search function inside of the input type if there is any word present inside that particular input types now control save it you will see nothing will be happening because we have not specified any code inside the search function or also we have didn't created the search function so now we need to create the search function then to start its block of the code inside of that we need to first create a variable because we need to get the rep value of that particular input type so we need to store that value inside the variable so for that we need to create here another const const then this is actually equal to search item is equal to search item and here we need to use this search input dot value dot trim function note this area where is actually like value dot so why it's giving the problem value dot and then we need to call the trim function so we are using here a trim so that we actually remove any spaces and before and after the word or i can say that the text so that is the reason we have actually used here a trim function then we need to check for the condition if search item that is the value is not actually going to equal to empty so search item we need to add that particular condition as well so it is equals to then we need to add this condition search item if it is not equal to empty then we need to enter here alert if it actually equals to empty so we need to here add a message please 
enter a word to search okay so this is the message that we want to display inside the alert when there is any empty value inside the input type and then we want to return all right otherwise we want to fetch the dictionary data so we want to create here fetch dictionary data function so this is the function that we have fetch dictionary data now this function is going to accept an argument so it is going to accept a search term that is the search input or i can say that this search item at this point of time because the value is stored inside this particular search item variable now we need to create this function so we need to here use the function keyword function then fetch dictionary data now this function is going to accept an argument of type string so here we want to specify the argument which is the search term so it is like search term because what we actually want to search we are actually going to use here a search term also i am going to actually copy this here also and we need to make this variable name as well as search term so that it will become same and meaningful because what we want to search it will be represented as a search term again you can name it as per your whatever you want as per your convenience you can name it whatever you want but i actually used here a search term then we need to actually create this function as an async function all right because this function is going to perform a network call so that is the reason we need to actually use this function as async function and instead of that we need to wrap the code inside the try catch block so this will be the try block and then we also need to add the catch block so this will be the catch block and instead of that we need to start its block of the code here we need to specify the error not console.error actually this is a shortcut of the visual studio code all right and here instead of that we need to actually first use a console dot log and then we want to print the error all right and also we actually want to display an alert which is totally optional if you want you can do it all right it's totally up to you so here i'm going to display a message like an error occurred all right so error occurred simply this particular message i want to display now instead of the try block we need to get the response of const and here i am creating the response variable is equal to and we want to get the response so first i'm going to here use the dollar symbol which is the template string so actually i want to here use the template string not a single quotation so we want to use here a template string then a dollar then curly brackets and instead of the curly brackets we want to pass the search term according to that particular value we want to search and here in front of that we need to append the url so this particular url that we want to listen so this is the url api dictionary dot so we want like this particular part just leave this particular frog one this word because this particular will be replaced by using this search term variable so here we need to paste the url all right so this will be the url for the application means the api call so if it is successful then we want to save the response inside the variable but before that we need to check for the condition so here we need to use the if condition and instead of that first we need to use the response so if it is okay so if it is returning a okay response then we want to save this particular data inside a variable like const data and we want to actually use the await function await means the await keyword await and then we want to store it in a form of json response dot json and here we need to wrap this entire code inside the fetch function so again we need to use here await fetch and then we need to pass the parameter which is a url and then this semicolon will be added here all right so this particular will be replaced by this search term because here this search term will be the word that will be come from this particular input type all right this particular input type variable will be replaced by this variable okay so this is for the response term and inside of this particular if block if there is any error we want to get that error so we are going to use here a throw new 
error so we are going to create an error new and then we need to display a message that we want which is failed to fetch the data okay so this is the message that we want to display after that getting the data if there is a successful then that data will be stored inside this particular data variable then we want to pass this data variable to a display function display result function so this function is going to accept the data as a parameter so this function will be like uh, display so this function will be responsible for the display of the data that is this particular structure will be created by this particular display result function okay so we need to create this particular function so here again we need to use a function then display result and this function is going to accept a parameter so we need to pass the data as a parameter so data and then instead of that first we need to set the result container dot style dot display to block remember inside the css part we have set the display to none so now we need to set the display to block so that it will become visible and then we need to actually treat this thing as an array so here we need to use the const because it is actually a json object so it is like word and uh, i can just simply say it as here word data and then the data is actually stored in a form of json data array because the word is will be treated like an array so here i have actually added a zero data zero that is actually going to represent like uh, at the zeroth index because this is actually at the zeroth index if i just simply do it like this so this is actually an array and the index of this particular entire array is actually started from zero so that is the reason we want to fetch the word so we have specified here a zero all right and after that you can simply console log it from here but i know that that this code is actually working so i'm going to continue the html structure part of the project that is this one so i'm going to create this structure so for that we need to add here a bunch of code so the first thing is we need to create here the word title because we have actually created the variables at the top that is word title description and audio button so we need to get the word title so word title dot and then we need to update the text content is equal to word data dot word right so this will actually get the word data from word so here this is actually the word that we want to fetch from the word data because the data is actually stored inside of this word this word data will be used to get the data from the json api means the json data all right and after that we need to construct the word description so word description so it's going to update the inner html then we actually going to use here our template string so template string and then first we need to terminate it then i'm going to split the code into multiple lines and here first i'm going to create the ul tag so ul ul tag then we also want a closing ul tag okay so the closing ul tag close the ul tag instead of that we need to first update the value of the word so the first thing is we need a word data dot meanings because inside the data we want a meaning so this meanings is actually from this particular one like this one this is a meanings we actually want to fetch it that is the reason because the word description will contain the meaning of the word all right and then we need to use here a map function so that we can add a key value pair and here we need to add the meaning that is meanings not meaning it's like a meaning and then we need to use here arrow and again instead of that we need to use the template string so then i'm going to split it into multiple lines so here we're actually getting the error the reason for that we need to actually close this bracket like this okay so that is the bracket will be closed here and then we need to call the join so that we can append a new line character at the end and now it's actually not giving any error so now everything is perfect because we need to nest the things because inside of that we need to append the li element so that is the reason we need to open the other template character and then we need to use here a paragraph tag paragraph tag and also we need to use this strong tag all right and here we need to 
actually close it with the paragraph tag and also we need to close the strong tag strong tag okay and instead of that first we need to add the dollar then the curly brackets and then we need to add the meaning meaning dot and here we need to use the part of part of speech so this is actually the part of speech that is this one we are actually fetching it here part of speech all right and uh, we need to actually here use the placeholder text that we want to display which is the part of speech right so this is what we actually done here and then i'm going to duplicate it into one more time so this is a part of speech then this is will be the definition okay and strong meaning and here meanings dot so this will be the definition like this one because it is an array definition then we need to add the curly bracket round square brackets and zero and then we want to fetch the definition that is this one all right so now the display result function is also done we have created the html structure that is actually used to create this particular result container values now once we done with it it's time to control save it to see whether the application is working or not so i'm going to here add a word dog and click on the search then you can see now our application is working fine part of speech noun definition unable you can see part of speech verb and definition to pursue intent to catch okay and if i enter a different word like uh, table if i press the enter key now you can see part of speech noun definition then part of speech verb so it is really depending upon the api data so if i replace here a word like uh, if i actually here remove the word press the enter key then it's going to display the different things so according to this particular api we are able to fetch the data now the next functionality that we want to achieve is to actually whenever we click on this particular button we want to play the sound of the word that is this particular one so to add the speak functionality we need to add here a function so first we need to set the listener to the audio button so add event listener and inside of that listener we want to listen to the click listener of the button and then we want to add the function audio button then const then search term is equal to and here we want to add the search input dot value dot trim again we need to trim it because we don't want to want any spaces so that is the reason then we need to add the search so this will be the same condition that we have added at the top this is the same condition so i'm going to copy it and i'm going to paste it here and then we need to call here a function which is speak speak function instead of that we need to pass the search term all right we save the data inside the search term and then we pass the speak function means the search term as a parameter to the speak function all right and now we need to create this pick function so this pick function is going to accept a one parameter which is actually a search term so i can change this search term as a parameter like word name so i name this argument as a word and then we need to create here a constant constant speech is equal to new and here we need to use this speech synthesis so this will be the space synthesis and this one we are going to use it speech synthesis uterines okay this will be the thing that then we need to pass the word and after that we need to set the language so speech dot lang is equal to is actually english us okay and then we need to set the speech volume so speech dot volume that is this one is equal to two and then speech rate is actually going to be one 
and then speech pitch dot pitch is also going to be one and after that when you set the window dot speech synthesis which is the speech synthesis function then we'll use the speak not spark speak and instead of that we need to set the speech that we have created control save it and now if i simply change my speakers because otherwise it is not going to record the audio whatever it's going to speak here now if i enter here a word like table search it now the data is fetched if i click on it table so you can see here it's actually said a table table so now our speak functionality is also working fine so that's it for the dictionary application we have now successfully built the dictionary project which is actually going to fetch the data from this particular api so the project is very simple it is first we have actually get the reference of the variables then we have set the listener to the button and the input type then we have actually checked for the actually any wrong entry of the input type for the invalid inputs then we fetch the data means we pass the search term to fetch a particular function is actually responsible for fetching the data from the this particular url because it is a async task means it is a network task so we need to use the async await it's very easy we catch the errors after getting the response from the data variable we need to pass that particular data to the display result function we have passed it as an argument now this particular display result function is actually constructed this whole layout to actually display the data inside this particular result container and then after that we add the audio functionality by setting the listener to the audio button and then we created the speak functionality by using this particular speak and created the speech so if i click on table. it then it's going to set the table now if i change here a word like frog search it and if i click on it frog. you can see now it's actually saying a frog so that's it for this particular part of the project if you like this project then please leave your review because your review definitely going to help me to reach more students and also it motivates me to create more awesome content like this so thank you for watching and i will see you in the next lecture thank you very much welcome back to this new module so welcome back to this module so in this module we are going to create the application that is text animation so let me first show you the application so this is the application that we are going to build in this entire module so when i you refresh the page you can see it's actually having an animation to the text so that is why i named this project as text animation project so we are going to build this particular application inside this module the first step is we need to start with the html part of the project so now you can see i have created some file inside my visual studio code which is index.html style.css and also script.js file now the first thing is we need to actually add here some code so the first thing is i'm actually going to press here a shift key and the sign of exclamation which is the emit abbreviation then i'm going to press the tab key this will give the boilerplate code for the html so here i'm going to rename the project as text animation okay and now we need to link the style file so here i'm going to use the style which is the link tag and then i need to provide the reference which is the style.css and then i need to link my script file which is a script src and here i want to provide the script.js file all right and after specifying the link and the script tag which is used to link the style sheet and the script file then we need to add here a heading that is this one javascript heading so for that we need to here use the h1 element so h1 and then we need to specify the heading which is the java script and also we need to add the class because this class will be used as a reference for the styling purpose and also for the reference inside the variable under the javascript file so this is the class name which is the heading by control save it so right now you can see it's actually displaying nothing i don't know why it is actually not showing anything index.html so if i actually here dispose it and if i again run the project then you can see now it's actually showing the javascript so i'm going to close it and this is the javascript version and this will be the final version of the application that we want to build so in the next part we're going to start with the css part of the project which is the text animation so now it's time to start with the css part of the project so for that we need to use the style.css file Instead of the style.css file, first I am going to select the universal selector 
and I'm going to reset the basic styling of the browser, which is the padding. So padding, I'm going to set it to zero. So padding is going to be zero. Then we need to set the margin to zero. And then we need to use the border box, which is the border box sizing, not border box. Actually, the box sizing is going to be the border box. All right. And then to select the body selector. Inside of the body selector, we need to add the bunch of things. So first we need to set the background. So I'm going to use here a linear gradient. And instead of that, first I'm going to select the 315 degree, which is the linear because instead of using to right to left, I'm actually using here a 350 degree angle. Then zero, then B zero. And then we need to specify the color, which is F1A. This will be the first color for the linear gradient. And then we need to use here uh, another color. And also I need to set the opacity to 0%. All right. And then we need to specify the another color, which is 591372. And then we need to set its opacity to 74%. Okay. And now if I control save it, you can see now we get the linear gradient color. Now the next thing is we need to add here uh, another property which is the font family so font family and here i am going to use this sans serif so you can see now the font of the project is actually changed if i save it now you can see this is the color and this will be the project of the final color now you can see there is some lines are actually showing on so don't worry we are going to fix it then we need to add the code for the h1 element so we need to change its color so the first thing is we need to set it to the center so text alignment is going to be the center and then we need to change the color so i will be here using the rgb function so here first i will be using 255 then 0 and then again here comma and then 5 157 so this will be the color so here actually it's like rab we need to use the rgb control save and you can see now the color of the heading is actually changed then we need to use the line height so line height i am going to use the 100 vh we can see now the 100 vh height for this particular is actually increased and it also come back to the center of the screen and also those and also those square lines is actually gone next property that we want to add is actually the font size right now it's very small so i'm going to use the font size 7 rem so you can see now the font size of the heading is actually increased next we need to add the things for the span element now the span element will be used to actually add the span to each and every character that we are going to do in the next part which is a javascript part of the project so what we are going to do we are going to use this style code to actually add the span tag for each and every character we are going to use the logic all right so the span and then also we need a span dot fade because right now this is actually a fade animation if i refresh it you can see it is actually a fade animation all right so for that reason we are actually going to use here a span dot fade okay and then we need to add the style code inside of these two blocks so the first thing is we need to set the display and the display is actually going to be like inline block all right and then we need to set the opacity not opacity it's like opacity to zero and after that we need to set the transition so transition is going to like from all sides means all is going to one and it is going to like is and then we need to use the transform so transform then we need to translate at the y-axis which is actually at the 50 pixel then we need to specify a comma not comma we need to use the another translate it is going to be like x and then again we need to use the 50 pixel right right now if i control save it nothing which is going to happen because we need to use this at the runtime by using the javascript now inside this pad dot fade we need to use the opacity to one and transform translate so again we need to use the transform and translate so i'm going to copy it here this property copy it and i'm going to paste it here and this is actually i'm going to replace it with zero and this is also zero all right and then we need to use the color so color again we need to use here rgb function so the red color is going to like 255 it is like 117 and the blue one is going to like 202 so that's it for the css part of the project so in the next part we are going to start with the javascript for this particular text animation project so now we are going to start with the javascript part of the project so for that we need to use the script.js file 
instead of that file first we need to get the reference of the this particular heading so it is actually a class because we have specified a class selector inside this particular h1 element which is a heading so we need to actually use here a query selector method so first i'm going to here use the const which is the heading and it is actually going to equal to document dot query selector then we need to specify the type of this selector so it is actually a heading so we need to specify the type of this selector along with its dot because it is a class selector so we need to specify the dot as well all right once we get the heading inside this particular variable which is the heading now we need to split this entire heading into the variable so we need to split this text into array of characters so for that i'm going to store this inside the variable so const text is equal to and then i'm going to use here a heading dot and it is actually going to be like text content so the content of the heading will be stored inside this text variable and after that we need to here use the another variable which is like const alpha alpha and i'm going to actually use here a text dot so to in order to separate this entire text into character so i'm going to use here a split function so we need to split it each and every character now this particular will be treated as an array of the characters and after that we need to actually use the heading dot and its text content we need to set its text content to an empty string so why are we actually setting the text content to empty now you can see if i control save it everything is actually removed from the web page okay if i refresh it nothing will be happen if i just simply comment out these particular lines of the code save it and everything will be back here so right now if i control save it you will see the blank white screen so we actually set the heading dot text content to empty string so that we can actually animate each and individual character and display it inside this particular heading element which is the html element all right now we need to add the span tag remember we have used the span style inside the style.css means we have specified the style inside this span tag so we need to add a span tag to each and every character of the javascript this is the final version of the application so we need to wrap this entire character inside this span element so to do that we need to use the for loop because if we do it manually it will be a very long running task or you can say that the time consuming task so that is the reason we need to here use the loop so i'm going to use here a traditional for loop so the length is actually going to alpha so like alpha variable value according to the length of this alpha value the variable will be means the loop will be executed not the variable the loop will be executed then we need to update the inner html of the heading as equal to then i will be use here a short syntax which is initializing and also adding the values so here we need to use the span tag span and also we need a, we need a closing span so we need to wrap this inside the double quotes okay and also we need to remove this one and then so we need to add here a span inside this double quotes like this one and then we need to terminate that all right and in order to avoid the error we need to use the concatenation and in between these we need to provide the alpha because according to the value of the alpha that is alpha and we need to provide the array brackets and according to the value of the i variable it is going to add the span tag to each and every character of the javascript now you can see the color is back but still the text is not visible now we have set the like a span tag to each and every character of the javascript text it's time to animate it so for the animation we need to here use the count variable so this will be used to keep track of the character so that is why this variable will be used then we need uh, another variable which is the timer so i'm actually using here a let variable that is the reason because this is going to update multiple times so i'm going to call the set interval function because we want to animate after a small delay so here we need to call the another function which is the on arrival so i name this function as on arrival and then i we need to call this particular function 50 means after every 50 milliseconds we need to call this on arrival function now it's time to specify this on arrival function so on arrival instead of this on arrival function first we need to create the span element so const then we need to create the span which is the name of the variable then heading 
dot query selector now we have multiple html elements because right now this javascript so i'm using the final version of the application to actually demonstrate some concepts so now it has more than one character means it has more than one because it is not treated as a single it has group of characters because the span tag is added to each and every character of this particular text so that, that is the reason we have used here a query selector all function so what we want to select we actually want to select the all span elements but according to the value of the count right so on the first time it is actually zero then this java will be selected and will be animated then on the second time the a will be animated and the third time the v will be animated and this process will continue until we reach the end of the text all right and after doing that we need to add the css so for that we use the class list because we also need a class list we need to add the css which is the fade so for that we need to use here a fade so coming back to the other version of the application so here we need to add the fade all right and then we need to also increment the counter if i control save it right now you can see we get only the j character because we didn't increment the counter variable so if i increment the counter here like plus plus terminate it now if i refresh it you can see now we are successfully able to animate the text which is javascript if i refresh it you can see now we have refreshed it now if i come back to the version if i enter here like dino code academy Control save it and now you can see we are now successfully able to animate the dino code academy as well it is actually a long text so like here if i use it and you can see we are successfully able to animate the dino code academy as well or i can just simply go with the javascript all right so this is our text animation project so now finally this project is completed so first we have done here we have first to get the reference of the heading which is this particular javascript heading means the text after that we actually initialize into this text variable so that we can use this text variable to split the text into the array of characters inside the alpha then with the use of the loop we added the span tag to each and every character of the text and after that we add the logic for the animation purpose which is we have used the count variable we have used the set interval initialize it to the timer variable then every time we call this particular function after every 50 milliseconds okay so that marks the completion of the project for this text animation so if you like this module then please leave your review because your review definitely going to help me to reach more students and also it motivates me to create more awesome courses like this so thank you for watching and i will see you in the next lecture thank you very much